You can support this show at patreon.com slash ASA podcasting. Welcome to a Skyrimatic podcast where I will discuss my adventures and misadventures through Skyrim. Join me, add your stories, add your tales. Let's uh, let's get into this thing. Uh, welcome back, everyone. This is going to be a roundtable episode. So I'll be talking about my roundtable character, and then the full roundtable part of it will be on right after that. Uh, I was on on my bill to make that one. I believe I already said that previously. I uh, should make the next one. Just a heads up. So my roundtable character, Lord Tubbington, uh, Khajiit, focusing on block and enchanting and sneak while... <laughs> Having to put three points in Magicka for every one point of stamina and two points of health is a bit of a challenge considering I need a lot of stamina for block. So that's been a little bit of a challenge, I have to admit. It's uh yeah, that's that's been a bit of a challenge to build up the bashing and stuff when I can't build up my stamina. So I'm gonna have to use my enchanting to uh you know, to kinda kinda get things going in a better direction. Um, so anyway, I have, uh, here's what I've done. So kind of what I've done so far, obviously finished the quest we were supposed to for this time, but, um, I also went and started the Imperial Legion and started some of the, I just finished the battle of white run. So I'm I'm in on that storyline. Also Winstad Manor is my house. So I was finally able to get that. I did a lot of building on that. Um, I think I have a armory, I have the basement, I have a bunch of stuff set up in the basement, have, uh, stables, fishery, little garden, a little place for some animals, uh, some beds, that kind of stuff, you know, the basics. Uh, I'm not like fully furnished inside, but I'm getting there. Uh, gotten pretty pretty far along in building that, so that that I really didn't start any smithing until I did that. Actually, that's actually been a uh, nice boost to my smithing. Um, done six perks in sneak, four in enchanting, and then three in block. Uh, those are the three I'm obviously focusing on. The, the block one is the toughest, obviously because uh, <clears throat> my low. Uh, <laughs> low stamina, which makes blocking more difficult. Like, I can block, I just can't do a lot of offensive blocking, if you know what I mean. I can't uh, do the power... I don't think I have enough stamina to even do a power bash, which is a perk I just picked up, which kind of sucks, because I was like, oh, I was like, this would be cool. I'll use power bash, but uh, it doesn't seem to be working, because I don't think I have enough stamina. My stamina right now... All right, with, with enchantments, my magic is 295, health 190, and stamina 145. And both the magic and stamina have some sort of enchantment. So that tells you where I'm kind of sitting. All right. As far as each individual thing, I usually don't run through these like this, but I thought it would be different this time to do it. So alchemy 32, illusion 65 with, uh, I think I have two perks in that. I've done some, some of those perks because I've been using illusion obviously for muffle. I don't think I have invisibility on that character. So I've, I've been doing that for the muffle. Uh, destruction, I've like used three or four perks in there as well. Since I, you know, obviously have a bunch of magicka, I thought I may as well use it. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, destruction is 49, resto is 30, alteration 34, enchanting 66. So my main ones uh, being. Well, one of my main ones being enchanting, I have up to 66. Uh, one of my other, my smithing is only 33, heavy armor 20, because I don't think I really have any. One of my other focuses, block, is up to 37, which isn't bad considering uh, I, I'm trying to kind of use what I have plus focus. So it, it's 
you know, it's tough. Two hand at 16 because I don't think I've really done that at all. Uh, one handed, I'm at 36. I've started using that more so I can use the block more. Uh, but I'm also wearing robes. <sighs> so yeah, it's, uh, kind of my, my character's kind of a mess right now, but it's fun. <laughs> it's making it a little more challenging. But so, uh, archery's 40 because I've used that. I used that early on, um, to kind of survive as a mage <laughs> and kind of, uh, or a mage with a shield, I should say. So I, I kind of weakened enemies before I went up to them rather than just taking them out from afar. Uh, light armor's 34. Sneak all the way up to 75. Obviously, that's pretty easy to bump up there. Lock picking 39. Pickpocket 24. I've done a little bit of pickpocketing, actually. And uh, speech 35. So, yeah, I'd, it's, it's kind of a... I've been kind of bouncing around with how I play it. I started out mixing the archery and shield stuff. Uh, so like I would weaken them up from a little bit further away because I'm not doing any smithing, so my weapons aren't all that strong anyway. And then I run up, hit them with some shields, and then get them with some magic. Then I started doing some conjuration, a shield, and some one-handed magic. And, you know, I got to use the magic just because it's, uh, you know... I got a lot of it. <laughs> so that's what I got the most of. So I got to, I got to find a way to use it. I need to find a way to use it while using the shield. So that, that's my thing. Uh, I believe one of my, one of my goals is to go to the, uh, Perry Wright shrine or pay Wright shrine or whatever it is and get a spellbreaker, the shield from there. Cause that'll be quite helpful going forward. Uh, I won't have to worry about, uh, the magics getting me as much. Um, so locations, I've discovered 62 locations, uh, cleared 13 dungeons, uh, gone through 26 days, slept for 17 hours, and waited for 23. I believe I'm fast traveling quite a bit with this one. Uh, seven standing stones, found 42,000 gold, most gold I've had. I got about 18,000 right now, so that's not bad. Uh, chests, skill increases, books, blah, blah, blah. Let's see, food. I've eaten a little bit of food. Only 18 items. That's not bad. Uh, books. Barters. Nobody cares about that. I con contracted uh, three diseases, however. Mm, Got to be safer. Uh, I've completed 16 quests, as well as miscellaneous objective quests, 29, and main quests, 7. Side quest, 4. So... That's kind of how I'm sitting in there. Let's see. One Daedra quest, four of the Civil War quests, um, zero, 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 four companions, Winterhold, Thieves, Dark Brotherhood, and I have not completed any, obviously. I uh, killed about 119 people, 68 animals, and 14 creatures, and 151 undead because they're everywhere. And one Daedra. Uh, let's see. My favorite weapon. Oh, yeah, that's right. I forgot about this. I see. I've always heard people talk about the Dawnbreaker. And I've just never used it. I don't know why. I've always gotten it, but I've never used it. Well, I was like, since I'm not really smithing, I'm like, I might as well use it. And I've been using it, and it's fantastic. <laughs> that explosion is great. So that's kind of what I'm doing right now is I have a... Uh, Shield of Solitude, I believe, where it has a, like a double enchantment thing on it, and the Dawnbreaker. So that, that so I'm rolling through dungeons with that right now, and the Dawnbreaker is fantastic. I love it. I don't know why it's taken me so long to use that puppy, but uh, yeah, so that's that's what I'm using now. Uh, I've done five backstabs, so that's not too bad. I know 19 spells, and my favorite is apparently the Fire Rune. I would have thought it would have been healing, but it's the Fire Rune. And my favorite school is Destruction. Uh, five Dragon Souls, eight words I've learned. Um, unlocked five of them, obviously, since I only had five souls. Uh, ba -ba -ba. My favorite shout is Unrelenting Force, because why not? I've only used six soul gems, but I've trapped 76, so that's not bad. Made 69 magic items. And I've improved five weapons. I've only made 11 weapons. Wow, I've really not done a lot of smithing at all. I've improved zero armor. 
So that tells you. I have done some alchemy. Uh, I mix some potions because I've needed it just to get, you know, to survive. So basically that that's kind of where I'm sitting with that. Uh, I've harvested a bunch of ingredients and mixed a bunch of potions, plucked a bunch of wings. Uh, not much for crime. I got, currently have a bounty of one <laughs> somewhere in uh, Hjalmark. Oh, y'all march. I have a uh, bounty of one. <laughs> My largest bounty is 40. I have pickpocketed a few things, like 32 items. So I'm not like super clean. I paid my $40 or 40 septum bounty and got through there. Uh, let's see. Some of the quests I've completed. Uh, what I have active right now is I have the Regain the Pale, Reunification of Skyrim, since I've done White Run. I'm now heading out to the PAL to help out out there, and they'll send me on the random the quests to go secure places in the PAL. Uh, diplomatic community I got coming up. Uh, Dragon Board sitting on there. Uh, the Mind of Madness is sitting on there. Uh, let's see. Once I finished, I finished Battle of White Run. Message White Run, obviously. Horn of Your Game Windcaller. Something, something, something that I can't read. Ah, uh, something, something, something. <laughs> the Way of the Voice, Break of Dawn, Jagged Crown, Wolf Queen, Dragon Rising. So I, I finished a decent amount of quests. Uh, yeah, so I'm using Dawnbreaker. I also have a Ancient Nord bow that I'm using with some... I have some dwarven arrows that I've probably stolen from somewhere or found somewhere. I actually have some dwarven bolts too, which is weird. I must have come across them somewhere. But uh, yeah, so that that's the the ancient Nord bow is. I mean, you can tell that's not a very strong weapon, and that's kind of my archery right now. So I'm not using that a whole lot right now. I've switched to uh, Dawnbreaker, and I also have an ebony sword that I think I got from um, one of those guys, <sighs> Death Lord. From the Draugr Death Lord. So I battled the the one in uh, by Winstead Manor. What's that? Houston Grav or something like that. So there's the guy at the end. And uh, I used, uh, I did a lot of sneaking and a lot of fire rune and a lot of uh, fire atronach. <laughs> so that's kind of how I survived that. I would sneak, throw out the atronach, put a rune down. Let him run into it, let him get fired up a little bit, shoot an arrow or two, hide, repeat, rinse, repeat. So that's kind of where I'm sitting with that. Uh, I'll probably get back to the character. I don't know when. Hopefully this week sometime because I, I got pretty far in my uh, Dawn Guard playthrough with the other character. going. Leg- I think on this one I'm not playing – well, not playing Legendary. Maybe Expert. I don't know. I think – Adept or expert, one or the other. Uh, kind of playing it where I can go through the quests without like an incredible amount of stress and getting killed by random shit. So that's kind of my goal. Uh, I think I'm going to keep working on my house and I'll do the next part of the dragon quests, but mostly focus on building my house up some more and, and things like that. Kind of work on leveling up a little bit, I guess, through that way. That way I can, uh, you know, smith to make some uh, iron fittings, some nails, some locks, some hinges, all kinds of good stuff like that. Yeah, so that's kind of where I'm sitting with that character. It's been uh, been way different trying to play it like this, trying to balance the blocking and the magic and still focus on enchanting as well. Uh, sneak's easy because you just sneak. Um, mixing the blocking with the allocations I have to make is the tough part and trying and, and I'm really really trying to put most of my perk points in those three the sneak, the enchanting and the the blocking I'm trying to focus most of my perk points there as best I can you know when I level up enough where I can actually do it even if that you know makes it harder <laughs> which you know, or even if I feel like it's a wasted perk point, I'm still going to put it in there just because I've never really put perk points into blocking because I've never really played. And you know, where I, yeah, I've put some in there obviously in the past, but I kind of wanted to focus on it a bit more since it's one I, I, I'm kind of taking that as my main one 
to focus on because enchanting and sneak pretty easy to you know level up quickly. Enchanting super easy to level up quickly as well as sneak, but um, because uh, if there's low levels and pretty much everything you enchant boosts you up like a whole whole level. So that's kind of where I'm sitting with my character. Uh, let's see what everybody else is up to coming up in the rest of the round table. I believe it's like two and a half hours long. Hopefully the file size is not too big for me to upload. We shall see. We shall see. As far as everything else, uh, you can reach the show to Scaramatic Podcast at Gmail. Oh, here's another thing. Um, San Diego Comic Con is San Diego Comic Con's coming up end of July, um, 20 something to the 20 something. If you're going to Comic Con, shoot me an email, or if you're in a Facebook group, uh, post it on there because uh, Sherry was asking about it, and it's a fantastic idea to have a like a little meetup or something. Obviously, I'm going to be out there. I believe uh, Juan from the Facebook group, I believe he lives out that way, he had mentioned. And uh, mentioned he might be able to find a place to meet up or whatever. So anybody interested in that, it's uh, sometime, be- let's see, when is Comic-Con? I think sometime between like maybe like 22nd, <laughs> some July 22nd around there. I'll look up the exact dates for next time. But... Anybody going to be out there that way, meet up for a few minutes here or there, whatever, you know, grab lunch, grab a drink, whatever, if you're old enough or if you drink or if you don't. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, just shoot me an email if you're not in the group. Obviously, not everybody uses the Facebook group and uh, not everybody uses Facebook, and I completely appreciate that. So um, if you're interested, drop me a line somehow. Um, I'll talk more about it as the episodes come up and as we, you know, as we get an idea how many people are going to be out there, um, you know, from the community. So San Diego Comic-Con, if you're going to be out there, drop me a line, scarymatic podcast at gmail.com. Check out the Facebook group. It is, uh, facebook.com slash group slash scarymatic podcast. I'm not sure how they break it down. If there's underscores or anything in there, but, uh, you can search it in the Facebook thing. Uh, also, the artwork for the show from Miss Claire Lafar from Introdex. You can uh, check out our Etsy store at Etsy.com slash MyFireprints, M-A-I-A-F-I-R-E-P-R-I-N-T-S. <laughs> All right, everyone. Take care. Who's rapping? Overkeen. Dragons are not overkeen. I'll dice them like a knife, slicing right through an aubergine. My dragon shelf flow is sweeter than a soda stream. You won't believe your eyes. I'm like an overload of dopamine. A broadsword in one hand and a magic spell in the other. I'm the last of the dragon. Welcome Lord, to the, the third episode of a Skyrim Addict Podcast Roundtable. Everybody. Welcome, everyone. Um, before we get started with the roundtable this week, Victor had a quick correction that he would like to go over. It's something he had in the last episode. Victor, go ahead, sir. Yeah, I just mentioned last time about the uh, smithing uh, skill tree in Sky Re, and I think I said something about it being uh, brought together in Sky Re. Well, I was completely wrong. Uh, I meant to say it was split apart in Sky Re so that it ends on the left side in Dragonbone on the right side and Daedric. Uh, but anyway, I just wanted to make that correction in case anybody was listening and noticed my error. Okay, that's all I have to say. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, that's cool. Um, so we will just do a brief reintroduction just so that everyone knows who we are, where we come from. Uh, Colin, if you'd just like to tell us your name, maybe where you're calling in from, and um, our category this week is tell us a couple of your favorite movies, if you would, please. Uh, my name's Colin. I'm calling in from London, England. Um, my character's name is Gonvar Oakenmaster. And I think some of my favorite movies, one that I don't own it on DVD, but I have to watch it every time it comes on the television, is The Last Samurai with uh, Tom Cruise. And I don't know why. I've never actually seen that, but I have heard it's good. And let's see, that's about it. I don't think there's many other films I have to watch if they come on. That's about it. Okay. That's me. What do you say, Victor? 
Oh, Victor here from the state of Massachusetts, U.S., uh, and I, my character's name is Slythe Aaron. Uh, I guess I'd have to say if I, uh, for movies, one of my favorites of all time is The Princess Bride. Oh, very um, nice. And, uh, and I, I'm also really fond of, uh, Last of the Mohicans, so, but The Princess Bride is probably, you know, my Desert Island movie. Great, yeah. So. And I am Andrew, and we are calling in from Indiana, near Indianapolis. And my character's name is Mania Ababna. And uh, it's a hard question to answer, but whenever anyone asks me what my favorite movie is, I usually default to the movie Jaws. I'm a big, cool. big, fan, of, big fan of Big Fish. Yeah. Uh, seafood special. <laughs> yes. And... Um, We are the show who compares and contrasts Skyrim experiences through a lively roundtable discussion by playing the same quests with characters with characters who have been randomly assigned drastically different attributes. Welcome, everyone. Glad to have you here. I'm glad to be here. And so am I. Colin, can you uh, just quickly go over your three assigned attributes for Gunvar? Uh, My three assigned attributes is magic, it's illusion. Um, my warrior skill was one-handed, and my sneak or sort of thief skill was uh, speech. Speech. Okay, oh, Victor. or did you mean my um? No, other no, one? that's that's exactly yeah. Oh. You did it correctly. And Victor, what do you have? I have uh, two-handed as uh, the warrior skill. I'm always confused about which is thief and whatever. But anyway, the other two are um, enchanting and alchemy. Yeah, those get confusing. I would think that alchemy might be in the uh, magic realm, but that's evidently categorized over in, in the thief Yeah, for some reason. And um, my three were uh, two-handed and speech and restoration. So those are the categories that I have been assigned. Um, Colin, how, what sort of adventuring have you been doing? Over the last few weeks, uh, um, I've basically been going to town on on Gunvar. Um, I I started taking notes, but what I had to do is because I was enjoying it so much, uh, because I was um, playing so much, I had to just uh, keep on saving and save the saves instead of deleting them. And then when I got a chance, I'd spend a day going through all the saves and then making notes. So they kind of um, they change in the way they're put together through, um, but it's like goes on for like twenty odd minutes just reading it. So I think I'm going to have to break it up a bit. So if you want to move on a little bit to what you guys been doing, and I'll see where I can start. Okay, uh, Victor, what have you done? Have you gotten yourself a house and a spouse and your followers? And have you joined a faction or anything yet? Yeah, well, I've been uh, I've been working pretty hard at it too, uh, but mostly um, just meandering around a lot. I um, I think I was last time I was up to like level twenty five. I haven't really moved that far. I'm I'm level thirty now, um, and of course I did the three uh, assigned uh, sections of the main of the main quest, um, but. Um, so I took a few scribbled notes, nothing quite so complete as Colin, but uh, um, we can go through this a step at a time too. But I should, uh, I have definitely built my house, which is Heliarchan Hall, um, and I've been working on that. I got lazy and just spent the money to have my house Carl furnish it for me. I didn't feel like uh, making uh, all that furniture, but I did uh, decide that I wanted to add some lights. So I've been hunting lots of goats and uh, for the goat horns and Slythe has dis- developed a distinct uh, taste for goat meat, which uh, I must say I, I share with him. And so we uh, we've been, we've been roasting lots of leg of goat uh, and making all kinds of other wonderful goat recipes. Uh, Are you a so, fan of Indian food, Victor? I love curried goat. Yes, um, me too. I'm a big <laughs> fan. Um, and so, uh, so that's been the goat thing. And also, uh, uh, I have, I decided I, it was about time um, so when I when I hit level thirty. Uh, I guess that's the trigger for the uh, Boethius calling quest. Uh, so I 
thought, well, hmm, now it's time to go find Koznak. And uh, so I did. And uh, I went to Markarth. I ditched all my other followers. We can talk about other followers later, but uh, um, and went and picked up Koznak at the uh, uh, was it Candle Hearth Hall in, in, in Markarth. And I decided that we were going to take a grand tour of the north side of Skyrim doing several little fetch and kill quests along the way. Um, and I have to say, uh, I have developed a great fondness for Koznak. He's a very, very funny character. He's got some great lines. I don't know if some of them are, uh, may have been added by one of the mods I use called uh, follower commentary overhaul, which unlocks some of the unused commentary, um, and gives some of the, and sort of, I guess it shares out some of the commentary from other NPCs. So, uh, but, but, uh, it, it's, he's got some very funny lines, uh, and, and he's pretty good, uh, um, at several things. He's pretty good at, uh, uh one handed, uh, he's got a pretty high level with that. Um, and he's good block, um, and he's got some good archery. I also use a mod called, uh, Amazing Follower Tweaks, um, and that allows you to view the stats of all your NPCs. Uh, followers, so I can tell what they're good at and what they're not good at. Um, and he, he's he's got some he's got some mad skills in a few places. So anyway, that's where I'm that's where I'm at for now. Do you have uh, any of his most famous or some of your favorite lines that he? Oh, you know, I thought about. Uh, <laughs> I thought somebody was going to ask me that, and no, I don't. Uh, oh, okay. uh, I, maybe next time <laughs> I'll I'll remember to write something down. Yeah, jot something down if it strikes you as funny. He's sort of a, uh, you know, he's he's kind of plays the 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 goofy drunkard kind of uh, character, so he's got some good uh, uh, inebriated lines. Yeah, I'm not familiar with uh, Kosnak that I know of. You said he comes from Markarth, but not the Silverblood Inn from Silverblood. Sorry, that's that's the one. That's the the bar in the center of Markarth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah he's a barfly, uh, and. Uh, and I, you know, the first few times, and you have, in order to get him as a follower, you have to, you know, fight him just like you do with Othgird. Um, and he just acts drunk and clumsy and stupid. Uh, but once you get him out and, and, uh, start, you know, going on some quests with him, he's, he's pretty good. He's, he's a funny guy. So I'm, I'm enjoying his company. So you have to pick a, is it one of those ones where you have to pick a fist fight with him? You brawl yeah. or whatever yeah. in the bar and then, yeah. Exactly. I did that with, uh, Uthgard. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The, I have her in a, on a different character. She's she's one of my followers. Yeah, no, I like Withgard very much. So, um, but uh, I have I have also picked up uh, along the way with with Koznak, I uh, picked up an orc. Uh, I forget her name. I then I write it down somewhere. Uh, she's actually somebody else's follower in this uh, in the round table. It starts with a B. I can't remember her name exactly, but um, Is she the the blacksmith. Or the blacksmith assistant in Markarth? Is it that lady? No, no, I picked no. I, she she was at the uh, Mor Kazgor or whatever uh, orc stronghold that's all, along the northern tier there between um, uh, between Markarth and and Solitude. Uh, Mm-hmm. And you go in there, and and she you have, you end up paying her dowry to to get her as a follower. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah, so I picked, picked her up. I've also got Mjol as a follower, but she's waiting somewhere right now, and she's waiting at Heliark, Heliark and uh, and of course the uh, uh, the house Carl uh, Gregor. Uh, so I have my choice of several followers. Yeah, I, I like hauling Gregor around with my other character too sometimes. Yeah, he's great. I, he's a he's a pretty powerful uh, uh, soldier, as it were. Yeah, is he the is he the one that's two handed or the one who's spell and sword? No, he's two handed. Yeah. Two handed. Yeah. yeah. How about you, Colin? Do you have any any good stories with your followers? Um. Yeah. So, you see, when I um had to find my follower, uh, I remember when I. We ended the, the last thing. I was saying that um, uh, I was just outside White Run because I didn't see the point in going in because everything for me was inside White Run apart from maybe my follower because I didn't know who he was. Mm-hmm. Um, so I went inside, and then it turned out that my follower was inside White Run as well. So the, <laughs> the, uh, the 
quest that I needed to do or the faction I needed to join was the companions. So I joined the companions and I find him really quickly because he's the dark elf that's fighting the woman uh, uh, when you first walk into your Vasco. Oh, nice. Yeah. So, um, where is it? I got my notes. Uh, found my follower, Atheist, the dark elf having a fist fight when you first enter your Vasco. He loses. Good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Who does he lose to? Uh, well, uh, that's her name is Nin. Juna Stonearm, so I'm not surprised he lost. Uh, yeah, something Stonearm. Stone arm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then uh, I got the hired muscle uh, quest. You know that one where you have to go punch somebody in the face? The very start of, um, was it uh, the Companions quest? Mm-hmm. Uh, I think, yeah. Uh, and you have to go around. And usually you get someone like uh, one of the women outside on the farm or something. I got Uthgard. <laughs> oh, no. Uthgard, I had to go. I was in light armor on legendary and had to go in and punch Uthgard in the face to try and continue the companion's quest. I was running all over uh, the bannered mare trying to run away from her because she just crushed me with each punch. Surprised it didn't kill you with a single blow. Uh, that's that was the worst part. I, you know, when you go out and you have to fight Farkas to show how strong you are. Yeah, he killed me. Killed you. Oh no! <laughs> he punched one- your nose straight into your brain. <laughs> yeah, no, he one-shotted me. You know, he got an actual kill cam because he was so much more powerful than I was. He just he got a kill cam and killed me instantly. That's funny. <laughs> I had to reload and do it again. And so you you're playing on legendary. Uh, I was to get all my skills up. So now now I've gone down to master. So <laughs> we can just uh, play on that and uh, have a little bit more fun. Man, I was not aware if so. You switch the difficulty higher, and that will actually make your skills level up faster, huh? Yeah, because you've got to hit the enemies much more, so that increases. So instead of hitting them three times, you've hit them six times to kill them. So mm-hmm. that increases your one-handed more times. So, so, so what if I uh, turn it on legendary right before I go through an enchanting spree? Will that make my enchanting increase that I, much more faster? That, well, I don't think so because yeah. I've still got to get my speech to 100 and uh, I, I haven't anywhere close to that. So I'm only like uh, 45 on speech. Well, you're but faster, I, you're further along than I am. I, I was interested to hear your strategy. What are you doing to get your speech, to level up your speech? Oh, I've just been selling stuff. Yeah, that's what I've been doing. I've been I, collecting as much jewelry as I can, then enchanting it, and then trying to sell it and that sort of stuff. Uh, yeah, because I haven't been selling. That. I haven't talked to that much. I have. I keep on trying to intimidate the thieves, but it never works. I don't know why. I, I've like I've even tried to intimidate. You know the thieves that you meet on the side of the road. Yeah. And you try it. It never works. Even when I'm like level eighty-five, it never works. They're, they're never afraid of you. They no. they tend to persuade easier than they intimidate. Uh, yeah, I, I persuade yeah. a lot of them. You know, do I look like I have any money? <laughs> yeah, you're standing there in full ebony armor. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, after I done, um, I joined the companions. Um, I just wanted to say that uh, I went to Gallows Rock. Gallows Rock. And uh, I just made a very tiny note here that says, we'll kill Ayla for being a useless idiot. <laughs> what did Ayla do to piss you off? Um, entire way through the fight, like, obviously she's, like, favors the bow. But if they do get close to her, that they have to get into melee. She pulls out that shield and, like, a knife or something like that. She just constantly blocks the entire time. She never, ever hits them. Hmm. For That's the not whole real. fight, she just stands there. I went. And I, I got killed like two or three times, and then like I, by the the third time, I just stopped and let this, um, was it the Skinner keep on pounding, on pounding with a giant two handed weapon because she just annoyed me so much. <laughs> and they sort of like snuck off and hid, hid in the other part of the room just to, and let her got beat up. And then loaded, reloaded again because she annoyed me that much. <laughs> That's weird. That's a strange, strange AI glitch or something. I guess. Uh, I, I just couldn't understand it. So. Yeah. Did she literally never attack, or was that? Yeah, she only attacked when she had the bow. Uh, maybe, maybe he wow. was just maybe he was just overpowering her because she was getting staggered a lot. 
yeah. because he was hitting her so hard. Maybe that was it, but it just, uh, just, she was no help whatsoever. And she wouldn't <laughs> shut up either. <laughs> She's a loud one. So what else have you uh, gotten into on your White Run adventure? <laughs> um, let's see. Okay, I started off here. Um, White Run, vampires attack. Everyone survives. Used courage and didn't hit him once. Uh, I pick up some vampire armor of conjuring. Light armor. Yuck. But go with it for illusion and sneak's sake. Mm-hmm. Uh, during Dragon Rising, all, um, all I use is the courage spell, a bit of bowl, and then I use the uh, dual wield for the finish. Can you explain and, the courage uh, spell a little bit? Uh, I keep on hitting um, uh, Irolith and all the um, town guards with courage, which gives them uh, means them won't flee for 60 seconds and gives them some, a little extra health and stamina. Otherwise, would Irolith and her little band, would they flee from the dragon otherwise? Uh, no, I think in, in that quest, um, they uh, they won't run away because they're protecting White Run on the guards, and Irolith definitely won't run away, but it just helps them out and it improves your um, illusion skills. Mm-hmm. But uh, you, you do have... It really, uh, do you think it really... Is a is a worthwhile spell. I mean, I I watched a few uh, let's plays, and of course, uh, I've I've watched some of Gophers and his uh, earlier one, uh, the Steve, Steve character. Yeah, he used a lot. He was he was throwing courage at all his followers constantly. I'm just wondering if if it if it really is that that worthwhile. It does work because you know in his new playthrough he uses Kaja. Yeah. Well, uh, in that one he used uh, Jazargo, and, and then Karjo in the, in the most recent one, yeah. Yeah, but I, I um, because Karjo, they, he doesn't use the magic with the the, the new one. But mm-hmm. uh, if you play with Karjo, if he's outmatched, he's a coward. He runs. He oh, runs really? away. Yeah, but if you hit him with the courage spell, he gets back up and gets back in the fight. Oh, okay. So that does work. So, yeah, I went, I went up against a couple of um, dragons with uh, Karjo and. Uh, Literally, the minute the dragon showed up, he ran and hid behind a wall with his hands over his head. <laughs> really, he did the duck and cover move. Yes, the, the one that all the kids do. Yeah. <laughs> That's classic. Um, did you get into Dragon Rising as well, Victor? Do you have any stories from your your experience at the Western Watchtower? Oh gosh, no! I just had that one uh, uh, screenshot I took, uh, uh, but I, I barely touched the dragon at all uh, in that particular uh, uh, episode. Uh, uh, I'd already, I, I'd already done a lot of stuff, so I ran over there just to get that started uh, earlier this week. And uh, um, by the time I got around to, because I was. I've been using a lot of crossbow uh, with with this character uh, to, since he's going to be in Dawn Guard anyway, um, and uh, so I got my crossbow wound up and threw a couple of shots at the dragon, and and then the guards killed him. <laughs> it, was, it was all over in seconds, so I uh, didn't have a whole lot of uh, no no great tales from no great tales of bravery and and uh, uh, dragon killing from that one. It's impressive. The white run guards are usually pretty useless. Yeah, they they just went right after him, and and uh, I was running around trying to get a good you know a good vantage point, and and I must admit I was also taking screenshots. <laughs> so, <laughs> so ever the photographer, you know, that's that was I used to be a professional photographer, so I, <laughs> I was just taking too many pictures, and. Uh, <laughs> uh, you're yeah, a tourist in your own adventure. <laughs> That's right. They killed the dragon. So, did you have your whole slew of followers with you? Uh, no, actually, um, I had uh, at that time. My assigned follower is uh, Berlina from the Mages Guild. So I, I had actually started that that quest line as well. But uh, during Dragon Rising, um, I. I think I left them all behind. I had already built Helyarkin, um, and I decided I'd go out and do the main quest, the three main quest items that we've, uh, that we were assigned this time, uh, by myself. So, uh, no, I did not have any followers with me. Um, nice. So, uh, 
Colin, do you have any else about uh, Dragon Rising? Any, any interesting events happen in the uh, besides yeah, I, your your besides your follower running and tucking tail? Oh, I, I, that wasn't. Sorry, no, I was just saying that the current spell does work. Oh, good. Uh, in another playthrough, not this playthrough, because I, I don't I don't like doing legendary with a follower because they will get you killed very very yeah. easily. Uh, so no, I was on my own as well. Um, but I did on the on the dragon. I found an iron helmet of major conjuring. Oh, nice! And um, was it? Uh, it was the proper Dovahkiin helmet, the one that you got on there on your on your picture. So it was that <laughs> one, and I was running around that until like level twenty twenty five. I was running around and that um obviously I'd take it off and put it on again when I got into a combat situation mm-hmm. which is good and then I got when I got back to white run from that I uh, got the dawn guard quest from York I got the nettlebane quest from Danica uh, I got the missing in action quest and uh, the in t- in my time of need quest uh, I got the note from Sid gear uh, and then was it I did a load of bounty quests to get some money and then went to Halted Stream uh, Camp to get the Transmute spell. Oh, I went there too. <laughs> got all the uh, Iron Ore, and that gave me enough money to buy Bree's Home. And Bree's Home's the house that I was supposed to buy, so it left me with a 1,000 gold after that. Great. Before I got into Dragon Rising, I decided I wanted to go grab my my spouse, who is Scout's Many Marshes, an Argonian who works on the dock up in Windhelm. Um, but I went up and, and got him and did his little quest where, um, you have to convince his employer that, uh, I think his name was Torbjorn or something like that. He, he is underpaying the Argonian dock, dock workers. So if you go and have a kind of a stern word with him, he, you can convince him to start paying the Argonian dock workers a fair wage. And then that made uh, Scouts Many Marshes available to be married, and I just happened to have my amulet of Mara with me already. So we headed straight to Riften to talk to the priest of the Temple of Mara, and we got the wedding arranged, and we got married and everything. But when we were deciding where we wanted to live, I was like, well, of course we'll go to Lakeview, because I just spent all the time building this house, and it's very nice, picturesque, right there in the countryside. But it wasn't allowing me to do that. And I was thinking, why the hell can I not move both of us over to Lakeview? You guys know why I couldn't move him to Lakeview with me? Uh, hmm. No? No. It's because I had not built a double bed yet. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, that's right. You said you hadn't built any furniture. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, only built, I only put containers in the place. I had zero furniture. I just had containers to store all my all my my reapings from adventuring. So, um, so I told him to hang tight at the temple. I said, don't move. <laughs> and actually he, I, he said something about, I will stay here and wait for you or something. But so I went back and made the double bed and then rode my horse all the way back to Riften and he was gone. Oh no. And I said, Oh crap. What do we do now? So I went back to Windhelm to see if he was at the docks. He was not there. I went into, I forget what's the what's the special little room that the all the or, Argonian dock workers work in or sleep in. I broke I broke into there and looked around and he wasn't there. So I went back to Riften to look around. He wasn't there. And I went back all the way to Lakeview Manor. He wasn't there. So I I was just kind of baffled and I didn't have any idea. I searched online for an answer and no one, I didn't really find a good answer to my problem. So I had to reload and do all that crap again. But first things first, I went and made that damn bed. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. And then I went and, you know, rushed through everything and got it done really quickly. Whenever Um, something like that happens to me, I, 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 I just fast travel (laughs) forward because I don't want to waste time running around all those trips back and forth again. Yeah, when I, after I reloaded, I was just fast traveling back to Windhelm to pick him up because yeah. it, it was it would be ridiculous to go from Lakeview to Windhelm to Riften to you know do all that all over again. That was crazy. So uh, I built the bed and then we went. <clears throat> excuse me. And we got married and I moved him back to Lakeview and then I decided that I wanted the uh, the lovers comfort perk that you get for sleeping next to your spouse. And, and I slept, and I woke up, and I didn't see any perk, and I was like, oh, crap, I'm still a werewolf. So 
I didn't get any, you know, perks for sleeping next to my mm-hmm. new spouse. So then I left him there and I went off and I cured my, uh, my werewolf affliction. I took a, you know, the witch's head. Where do you have to go? Um, to East Grimoire's tomb, I believe, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think so. yeah. And so I, you know, tossed the, the witch's head in the fire and then the wolf spirit split off of me. And that wolf I had a lot of trouble with. I was very surprised how tough it was to kill that wolf. I, get, I, I don't know why I had such trouble with it, but uh, it almost killed me a few times. I had to keep using uh, healing potions, and I was doing lots of healing, way more than I thought I would have to. Because wow. when I healed the werewolves of the other people, they, were, they seemed like a, a snap. So I, I don't know why it was so difficult for my specific werewolf hmm. uh, spirit, but I had trouble with him. Um. So yeah, that was my my pre um, Dragon Rising adventure. I also decided to go off to the Bard's College and get started and all that, and did the uh, the Burning of King Olaf festival, which was actually pretty entertaining. I kind of didn't really remember going having the uh, the Bard's College be very interesting my first playthrough that I did it, but it was actually you were right, Victor. It is a pretty fun quest. Yeah. Yeah, it's 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 no it's a no pressure kind of thing, you know. It's a nice little uh, interlude. Yeah, and I found out that you can't really become the head of the Bard's College either. You can only just become a member. So I don't know I'll, if I have to assign myself a new faction to become the leader of or whatnot. But <laughs> that I had the Bard's College and I did all that. And actually, Colin, you're doing speech, right? Yes. Have Have you gone to the Bard's College yet? No, I haven't been to Solitude at all. I haven't been to Markarth. I haven't been to Riften. haven't been to Windhelm. Wow. Well, I've, I found that they're very, I mean, granted they're in the, 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 the school of singing and arts and speech, so they actually, I got a good number of uh, perks out of the Bard school that I wasn't really aware that I was going to get. Oh, yeah, when the, you get the reward, yeah, you get loads of uh, yeah. skill-ups. Uh, like yeah. white armor and things like that from different people. Mm-hmm. I think you get the same thing when you bring back that. Like, have you done all the like, little side quests, like getting the loot and getting the yeah. drum? And, you have to yeah. find Pantea's flute from Hobbs Fall Cave. Yeah, makes and, dead uh, people dance. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Then uh, you have to tell Vittoria Vici to drop a tariff on imported spices to release the shipment uh, for a vet. And then you also have to fetch Riorn's drum from Haldir's Cairn. And, That's uh, a fun one. And then, uh, once you do all that, you start getting lots of nice little perks and all that. And you get the Haldir's staff. Two of them. Yeah, you get two of those. Yeah, hey, don't get that in Sky Ray, do you, Victor? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, there's some, a lot of stuff that I, you know, I, I, I'm not, I don't think I'm even, any longer aware of what uh, Sky Re has taken away. Or, yeah, um, was it, uh, you know, um, Haldir's Cairn, the guy who splits himself into three, the Draugr splits himself into three, and he's got the the frost, he, a frost one of himself, a fire one of himself, and a shock one of himself. Oh gosh, I totally forgot about that. No. I yeah, I, well, about. when you're when you're fighting him, if you're on the Xbox or you're on the PS3, um, you once you kill him. Uh, a, a staff drops, uh, drops off him and it's lying on the floor and you pick him up. When you search his body, there's another staff on him as well. Uh-huh. So you get two uh, two of exactly the same staff. I think it's a glitch. But in Sky Re, they fixed it, so you only get one. <laughs> yeah, or that might be the actually the, the unofficial uh, patches that fix that fix a lot yeah. of stuff like that as well, yeah. Uh, the patches fix the like the, the restoration loop, uh, the fortify restoration loop. You can't do that with mm-hmm. once you've applied those patches. Uh, a lot of the exploits uh, the the patches kill. <laughs> <laughs> so, you, uh, so you can't uh, level stuff up fast. So, let's have a look. Uh, from, right, so where did I go from there? Um, yeah, sorry. So from Gallows Rock, when I um, killed, um, oh, what's his name? The Silver Hand. Uh, my illusion was at 55. So I was like, oh, what I'll do is I'll run up to Winterhold and get like the next level um, spells. Um, which really annoys me because if you look at all the destruction spells, there's about 50 of them. If you look at the illusion spells, there's 12. 
<laughs> and they're all the same. There are four, or oh, no, there's sixteen spells, and they're all exactly the same. There's four spells in Apprentice. There's four spells in Adept. Four spells in, and they're all exactly the same spells. They're just stronger as you get up. Whereas Destruction, <laughs> you get a, a thousand bloody spells, and that was annoying me. But I went all the way up to. Winterhold to get the next level spells, and then it turns out I couldn't get the next level because I had to be 70 in Illusion to get them. So I had a total wasted time, but I um, I started the um, the Mages quest. So if yeah, you could uh, if you could design your own Illusion spell, Colin, what would it look like? If you wanted uh, more variance within the within the school of magic. Um, I haven't really got a clue myself. There's, um, like, in other, like, uh, updates that you can get on the PC or the sort of, like, mods you can get, they've got actual illusion spells that you can actually hurt people with instead of just control people. Mm-hmm. You can actually cause physical damage with the illusion spells and things like that. But it's just, it just seemed, like, very, very tiny. Like, if you look at... Com- Destruction compared to illusion, you don't get enough spells. Um, I don't know what else they could have done, but I just couldn't see. I thought they could have done a bit more. Yeah, that's what I was interested in. If they have such variance within the destruction school, what what do you think they could have done? But yeah, you're right. So they just have four different groups of four spells each. Well, what are the four spells then in the illusion? Oh, you got the fury. Uh, calm, um, fear. Uh, oh no, you got a few extra ones because you got the ones on their own, like invisibility and muffle. Okay, yeah. I just bought my first uh, spell tome of fury uh, this morning, actually. My um, scout so many marshes, who is now back at Lakeview with me. Um, I don't know if I couldn't do this with Yosalda before in previous playthroughs, but I found that I just will go and do uh, have an enchanting party by myself, up you know, and get all my jewelry and all my weapons that I've collected all enchanted up really nicely. But instead of having to go all the way to uh, Falkreath or Whiterun or something to sell, I just go straight to Scout's Many Marshes and I can sell everything right to him. So it's great to not have to take that extra travel step to, to go off and sell everything. Yeah. Can you Salda do that too? I don't know why I never noticed that before. Well, all all spouses start a little store, right? Don't they? I mean, uh, they don't necessarily have to be a a merchant. No, because Uthgard does. Uh, As soon as uh, you move into a house, uh, um, she starts a store. Camilla certainly does. She's already a merchant. um, Yeah. uh, Uthgard certainly isn't. <laughs> she's, she's a badass, but she goes ahead and starts a store anyway. So uh, yeah. And where where is this store? I don't see them setting up a little stand out in front of the house. I mean, where no. where are they doing this? In in their heads, I think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, I haven't married Koznak yet, so I don't know if he uh, um, if he starts a store or not. And are all spouses give you the 100 gold a day for, um, you know, you say, has the store made any money yet? And then they give you half of the earnings or whatever? Yeah. Okay. Because uh, I didn't remember Assalda being that much, but um, I thought that Scouts Money Marshes was earning more money for me on the side somehow. I'm not not sure why that would be, but I probably just wasn't paying attention. It does stack, so if you don't get it every single day when you go back, like three days later, you'll get 300 off him. Yeah, I must have been adventuring for a while. I came home one day and got like 2,000 or something in, in one go. I was like, sweet. Oh, sorry I was gone so long. <laughs> yeah. So, um, But after I went up to the Bard's College and uh, I got Jorn's drum from Haldir's Cairn, I also did the – I got Finn's loot. From Stony Creek, and that was the loot you were talking about. Um, and each one of those, each time you bring back, um, let's see, you bring back the flute, you get an increase of all magic categories by one level. You bring back Reniel's drum, you get plus one in all warrior skill levels. And the, you bring back Finn's loot from Stony Creek Cave. Um, you also get a plus one level of all the thief skills. So I, I like the, that 
aspect of the Bard's College. I hadn't noticed that before, but it's a good way to get your um, just everything up leveled up one. And uh, they also have a – I feel like there was more speech stuff that I got skills with too there, but I didn't write anything down about that. Uh, when you persuade them, when you're telling them the story from the book, mm-hmm. if you try, if you like, when you're persuading him. To, oh yeah, when you're writing the story with the guy, you're right. They're, they're saying the most the most outlandish stuff, and uh-huh. you actually persuade him to say that stuff. Then I think that increases your speech as well every yeah, time you do that. That was it. That's what I was trying to remember. Thank you, Colin. So yeah, if you uh, persuade him to do the most outlandish things, you will get a uh, plus one in your speech skill each time. It's cool. So anyway, after I did all that, I decided to go ahead and get into our assigned, um, you know, our assigned quests. So we did a uh, dragon rising, and um, I ran up to the top of the tower there when the dragon started circling around, and I didn't have any sort of projectile weapons on me at all. I, I don't carry a bow with me very often, and my follower had a enchanted crossbow with her. Um, so I was just looking for something that I could try to hit him with to knock him out of the sky. So I just busted out my, my flames and was trying to shoot him in the sky, but that wasn't doing anything. It wasn't hitting. It was too far off, I think. Uh, but he eventually landed and started eating the, um, the white run guards <laughs> and, uh, and they actually held their own pretty well. I was kind of surprised cause I thought again, you know, the white run guards are pretty useless. But um, I guess they at least entertained him for a while. Then it let me sneak up on him, and I pulled out my Wuthrod axe and uh, just whacked him a couple times, and he was dead really quickly. Was, was, I'd forgotten that dragons... I haven't played... My last playthrough, I have avoided opening the dragons at all. So the previous playthrough before that, I was all just battling legendary dragons and all the really hard ones. So I was really surprised when I just hit this one like twice and they died. I was like, wow, this guy's a real big sissy. <laughs> That's one of my favorite tactics. I, I I really prefer to try to strike on dragons right up close. Uh, I wait till they land and then dash in and, and hack away. Uh, it's a lot quicker and, and sometimes uh, more efficient than trying to bring them down with arrows. Yeah, and especially this early on, if you don't have, you know, clear skies or any of the shouts, you you know, and I have no projectile weapons. I don't. I don't have any means of bringing him out of the sky unless someone else right. does that for me. Yeah. I got uh, from the dragon skeleton there. Um, after, of course, you absorb the dragon soul, and everyone is mesmerized and starts calling you. Oh, the Dovahkiin is here, and they're like, Oh, what was that? What just happened? Like everyone is very confused and yet mesmerized by your powerfulness. All of a sudden. Um, I didn't get anything as good as Colin. What did you say you got? You got something pretty cool, a helmet of... Major illu- uh, major conjuring, iron helmet. Major, major, major conjuring, not just minor, but major. Yeah. What's the difference in major and minor conjuration? Uh, like um, 5%, I think. I think it's okay. like I thought it would be more significant than that, yeah. It's like 12, and then major is 17, I think. Mm-hmm. Well... Evidently, the dragon had eaten one of the guards because I found <laughs> white run guard gear on the dragon. <laughs> and I found, you know, a shield and a helmet and the armor. And uh, he also had 300 gold and three dragon bones and three dragon scales. And then we learned force, which is the first word of the unrelenting force shout. Other words known as foos. And uh, then I just went back to Whiterun to report to the Jarl. Does anyone have anything interesting that happened when they went back to Whiterun? Yeah, so you get the uh, the shout from the gray beards. Mm-hmm. No, I didn't have any 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 odd adventures when I went back to talk to Balgrof about about that. I just pretty much uh, breezed right on through it and headed for uh, for Iverstad to to climb the mountain. Mm-hmm. Well, when I stepped into the gates, I found two of the Alakir guard, and they were looking for a red guard woman fugitive, and that launched the quest in my time of need. You guys, oh, of course, you just right. I've only done it once. Um, I usually since then I've been ignoring it, uh, but. 
Well, the um, the Alec, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it right. It's like Alik dash R, so Alikir maybe. The guards are looking for a red guard fugitive woman uh, who came from Hammerfell and she's fled to um, Whiterun, and they've tracked her to there. But I myself am a red guard woman, so I am not inclined to turn over one of my own kind to them to die by their curved sabers. So I'm kind of letting that hang, and even if I do go help, if I go find her, I, I will help her escape when I finally get around to doing that. I'm not going to help them bring her down. I must say I never believe her. I, I, I think I think she's full of it, but uh, uh, that's just my opinion. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I picked up the same question. I ignored it as well. Yeah, my last playthrough, I went ahead and killed her, I, and. Uh, I think I also killed the guards too and took their swords because I thought they looked cool. They are, yeah. Yeah. Isn't there a, a pair of scimitars you get somewhere along the line? It's not from that quest, is it? There's, it, you can dual wield them. Uh, one of them is fire and one of them is ice, I think, or something like that. Is that? that I know that's not a mod because I, I, I have those in. That's, uh, um... Uh, that's on Solstheim. That's. Uh, oh, is it from there? Okay. Was oh, that Deathbrand? Uh, yeah, it's the pirate. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's, uh, nice. Soul Render and uh, Blood Tear or something. Thank like you. That. Yeah, that's the one. Okay. I, I didn't Very nice. It. Yeah. Yeah, I, I knew that those existed, but I, I wouldn't have been able to begin to tell you where you would have picked those up from. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, I'm going to have trouble with with this restriction of not going to Solstheim because I'm getting pillaged by the stupid cultists <laughs> on the I roads. Love, um, I went, I, when I was doing the, the Mages College, uh, I've, I've uh, completed it now, and I've got the um, the helmet of, um, the Iron Helmet of the Unburned, mm-hmm. and I also found a necklace of uh, fire abatement, so I've got like a like the maximum you can get of fire resistance. Nice. So I love going up against the cultists. Ooh, look, <laughs> look at those lovely robes. <laughs> I don't even have to like put any protection. Don't have to take any potions. Nothing. I just run up to them and start wailing them while dual wielding into their face. It's brilliant. Yeah. And Victor, you can feel free to go ahead and go to Solstheim. Just don't play through the um, the Dragonborn quest. I've already quest. been to I've already been to Solstheim because I try to get into the you know Guildenhall Barrow. To uh, get oh, all right. that, get all that free cash, but um, it wouldn't let me in, and that's where I got all my bone mold armor from. Yeah, so, yeah well, you I mean, feel yeah. free to go adventure. Just you know, just try to stay off the um, the dragonborn quest. Yeah, Once and I even if you do want to do it, you know what? You can start a new character for the next round table if you want. And I guess Let's... we're letting the cat out of the bag. Uh, the next round table after the dragon uh, storyline will be um, the dragonborn storyline up in Soul's time. I was thinking that maybe we'll do a civil war, but then I remembered, oh, wait, we've assigned people to be in the Imperial Legion and the Stormcloaks already, so there'll be some people further ahead than others. Yeah. But, um, so we're going to set aside the um, Dragonborn quest line as the next roundtable project starting in September. Cat out of the bag. <laughs> so after I spoke to the Jarl, it launches the next quest line. Um, and the, and I have written down JB. That must stand for Yara Balgriff. That's funny. So JB sends me off to High Hrothgar. I guess Rothgar. You don't pronounce that H, I guess. High Rothgar. And I, uh, he, he let me become the Thane at that point and assigned Lydia to be my servant lady and allowed me to purchase the Breeze home. And all that stuff happened when I talked to, um, to Yarl Balgriff there. I assume that guy has happened with you as well. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, well, um, I have an armored troll with me, but I forgot to mention when I was doing the dead man's respite um, for the the bard's college, um, there was a a dead man's respite. There's a spear trap not far from the entrance, and my troll died, so I reloaded, and he got stabbed again by the spears, and I was like, hmm, this is not going to work well. So I tried it one last time, and he died again, and like he just kept nailing that one that one little stone that makes the spears pop out. So I had him wait outside, and then when I finished the thing, he was gone. So I was like, well, crap, where's my troll? So I was really concerned that I was going to be without <laughs> trolls for the rest of the game, so I was going to have to assign myself a new secondary follower. But I just decided to go to um, 
back to Fort Dongard to, to see if it was an option. And he did sell me another troll. And then I counted, and I was like, oh, no, there's only three left in the pen. I wonder if after I get through five, if that will be it. If that's I can only have five trolls, and then I'm done. But then I um, went back, and um, a troll died in the Dragon Rising quest. The dragon toasted my troll. <laughs> So right after I talked to Yara Balgruf, I went back to Fort Dongard again, and he sold me another troll, and I noticed that there were still three, if not four, in the pen. So I was like, oh, he must be, you know, he must be a a, a, a troll breeder or something. He's he's getting these trolls from, he must show his trolls on the weekend. That's his hobby. And, yeah, they do uh, agility contests and stuff. Exactly. They, yeah. you know. So, um I, I guess my trolls were pure of breed because he lets me keep buying them. So, and I looked it up online, and they're infinite. I can I can buy as many trolls as I want to. There's an yeah, I was supply. I was assigned the the uh, the frost troll as my secondary follower as well, but I, I have yet to start Dawn Guard, so mm-hmm. I'm I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, I like having them around. Like I said in the last show, they're loud and they sound sloppy and stuff. But as Colin mentioned, they um. They don't tip people off to your presence. They they, yeah. they can't give you away. So, no. But I like having them around. They're really fun. I like having the troll. But um, after Dragon Rising, yeah, we went to the next quest, which was called Way of the Voice. And uh, Colin, would you like to describe a little bit of the Way of the Voice? Just a basic background of the quest, what you have to do, and all that. Well, uh, the Way of the Voice is um, you need to head to. Um Iverstead um, and once you get to Iverstead uh, then the quest marker changes from Iverstead to uh, High Hrothgar uh, outside you can pick up a little quest from uh, a man called Klimek uh, and he will uh, let you know that there's some dangers on the way up and uh, look out for some walls and if you can take up some dried meats up to to the greybeards that are pretty dangerous fellows but they don't seem to want to harm anybody um, you make your way up what's called the 7,000 steps, in inverted commas, um, and you travel all the way up. As you get to the uh, halfway up, you meet a couple of people and you see some shrines. Uh, it's really important that you read every single shrine in order on the way up. You'll find out why once you get to the very top. Uh, and about three quarters of the way up, you meet a, a lovely little frost troll that's going to welcome you to the near top of High Haraka. Uh, once you get past him, uh, then it's smooth sailing, and then you get to High Haraka and go in there and speak to the Greybeards. And what did the tablets reveal to us? Uh, it revealed a, a nice little, um, I don't know what you would call it, uh, an active effect of called uh, the Voice of the Sky, which will stop uh, all creatures from attacking you or running from you for 24 hours. But not trolls. Not trolls. Only just creatures. Like bears, spiders, wolves, foxes and bunnies will not run or attack you. Huh. I've never triggered that. No? That's a, re- a revelation. Interesting. Very nice. Uh, did you count the steps on the way up? Uh, no, but uh, our good friend Gopher has... And there are about I, 735, I think. Yeah, I counted them too. <laughs> I, I came up with 746. <laughs> I just knew that there was nowhere near 7,000. So. No, no. Uh, I keep on telling everybody they're on the other side of the mountain on the other way up that you can't find. <laughs> I was I was wondering why they make you go to Iverstead first. Um, then I thought maybe it's because they just want to show you the pathway. Is there another? Is there any other way up the mountain? Is that no, the you, only pathway that you can take? I don't think that's the only way you can get up. You can go down, like like you can go down the side of the mountain and then like come mm-hmm. out at White uh, at uh, River Wood and different yeah. other places. But you, I don't think you can go up any other way than through. Yeah, I've tried. It's virtually. Uh, I think it's impossible. Yeah, they have it set up with all the blocking of the path, so you can't get up that way. Yeah. 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 So uh, what happened when you uh, got up the mountain, Victor? Do you have any fun stories on the way up? Oh, uh, not really. <laughs> Sorry. I just ran ran up. I, I tend to, I, I mean, I've, I've done that a number of times, so uh, I, I just sort of 
sprint by all the animals and the trolls and stuff like that. I don't bother to stop and kill them. Um, so, or if I'm riding a horse, I just ride even harder and sprint away. Um, so, uh, no, I just went straight up and, and started the, uh, the way of the voice. Um, and, yeah, uh, I, I use sneak and calm on, on all the creatures, just calm them and sneak past. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 I don't like bears much, but it seemed, just seems terrible just to, just to willfully kill them all <laughs> on the way up. There's, there must be four bears on the way up that, uh, uh, those steps, so. Yeah, I was gonna say, when I crossed the, the bridge to hit the path, uh, immediately a bear attacked us. Yeah. And, uh, I, um, sent my troll up to go fight him, and then I went up to give him a hand, and I ended up whacking my troll in the face and killed him. <laughs> oh, no. So I killed the bear too, and then then I fast traveled back to. I, I've decided I'm not riding my horse back to Don the Fort Dongard every time I need a new troll. So I fast traveled back, and then fast traveled back again to Iverstead with my with yet another troll. But at this point, I was actually over level twenty, so my normal troll turned into a frost troll, and that's where I got my my new buddy Frosty. He and I went up the uh, mountain. And then I had a, a troll off when we came up to the frost troll, and they I let them beat on each other for a little while. But it didn't look like my troll was going to end up on the positive end of that, so I gave him a hand and, and helped him with the uh, our enemy frost troll that we met, like three quarters up. And so um, then we eventually made it up to the top. Um, does, uh, did, uh, what's his name? Arngir? Angier? The, uh, the gray beard? Yeah, did, uh, Angier. On gear. On gear, yeah. Um, did you have any interesting interactions with on gear, anyone? Um, I shouted in his face. <laughs> shouted in his face. I wrote down in quotation marks here, let us taste of your voice. I just thought that was a, <laughs> I thought that was a really strange, strange way to say shout at me. Yeah, all right, old man, pucker up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> Let us taste of your voice. Yeah. And uh, when you, when you taste your voice, you get the second part of the unrelenting force, right? Row. You get the row, which yeah, get row there. stands for balance, I believe. I wrote that down. Hopefully that's yeah. correct. And uh, we also learn up there, we learn the first word of the whirlwind sprint, which is fury. And so then you have to go outside, and they make you do a little sprinting Skip. demonstration, right? Yeah, I've just yeah. Start, started using that more often. I, I didn't realize for a long time that you could use that to jump across short, uh, you know, chasms and things. Uh, so I've been playing with World and Sprint more this time. Have you found that in um, caves and dungeons that, they have set up a lot of specific little high perches and stuff for you to use that? I don't know if there's a lot of them, but there are several places where you can find a treasure chest or, or something. It's, I don't think, I'm not sure if there are any, just like there's no quest that relies on you having lock picks. Uh, I don't think there's any quest that relies on you being able to jump over something in order to get to further, further along in the quest. Is there a, it's, it's a, the only place I can think of, and I don't, uh, forgive me, I don't remember which dungeon it's in, but there's, there's one dungeon where you pass three stones that activate as you pass them and raise gates. And yeah, that's the very next one. That's the horn of Jorgen Winkle. Is it, is it in there? Yeah. And I think there you're sort of expected to use the whirlwind sprint, but I don't think you even have to use it there. I think you can sprint through that. Um, you, you, you're actually, your normal running is fast enough to get through those? I think so, because I'm too stupid to, <laughs> to think of stuff like that. I think I sprinted through it the first time uh, and didn't use whirlwind sprint. I, <laughs> I, I'm not 100% sure, but... Uh, I think you're expected to, you're certainly expected to use it there. Um, mm -hmm. But, uh, uh, yeah. So anyway, uh, sorry to jump ahead like that. Oh no, you're fine. Um, yeah, that's where we're headed to next anyway. Um, after you go out into the courtyard to demonstrate your whirlwind sprint, you have to run through that gate that closes and, uh, they say, oh yeah, you, you did a good job. And then an Anjir, um, tells you, 
that the next step <clears throat> to becoming um, a Dovahkiin would be to go to Ustengrav to retrieve the Horn of Jürgen Windcaller. And the Horn of Wind, Jürgen Windcaller, um, would you like to give us a brief description of uh, a general outline of that quest there, Victor? Well, sure. I, obviously, I've already <laughs> let the cat out of the bag on it. I, I, details are not my strong suit, so you'll have to forgive me when it comes to things like that. I don't, make, I don't take notes like you two do, but um, uh, it's. I do like that area over there where Ostengrav is. Uh, it's, it's a, it's a pretty the marshes and so on. And, um, but uh, the the crux of that is that you get through there and you run through all of that stuff and kill lots of Draugr, I guess, and, and things, and you end up at the end of it, and there's no horn. Um, no horn! <laughs> so, uh, and then that's when you uh, go and meet uh, our friend Delphine. In inverted commas, friend. Yeah, friend. Uh so that opens up a whole other thing. I'm not a big fan of the blades, so uh, I can't just let work. this. I can't just let this get brushed over again. Do the do the Brits actually call quotation marks inverted commas? Yes. Wow, I, I was not aware of that. That's very interesting. That's that's <laughs> awesome. Okay, sorry to interrupt. Go right ahead. <laughs> so, I've, I've said my piece about the blades. Uh, no. Um, actually, it's a fun it's a fun dungeon if I remember correctly. It's not a it's it's not a bad dungeon to go through. I I don't usually pay attention to uh, or remembering exactly what loot I get out of it uh, mm-hmm. out of all these dungeons either. But um, uh, it's there's there's some good stuff in there if I remember correctly. Um, I, yeah. I have written down that there was an ice mage and a fire mage, so I, I took both of their um, their robes. Um, and there are plenty of skeletons and Draugr in there, which is good yeah. for me because I'm collecting uh, bone meal for you know for my my bone mold armor. Oh yeah. Also, yeah. I also have written down that there was a necromancer in there, so there's you know the would that be uh, the conjuration robes maybe, and uh, just there were other mages in there. There was lots of magic guys in there. It looks like. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've I got some notes on it if you don't mind. Yeah, go okay. right ahead. Sir. So uh, I head into Ustengrav, uh, use illusion to get necromancers to kill the thralls. Thralls actually win, then drop dead after killing the necromancers. Hmm. The only <laughs> the only thing that goes well. Uh, no illusion spells save muffle and courage for Lydia. Uh, I use archery to get Drogo's attention, summon a flame at knock, and back Lydia up with healing hands. We finally get to the fighting room, final room, and it's spiders. Nice. Hit him with fury and a flame out of knock. Giant frostbite comes down and have to dual cast fear on him, but it works. He doesn't run away, but he doesn't attack either. Switch to dual wield uh, until we take him down and then enter the final room and find a note. WTF. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the where the, the spiders are? That's the that's the area of the dungeon where all the pressure plates and the flames are. You have to sort of jump across, or again, that's the one. Uh, yeah. 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 Okay. I just Actually, I just put two restorations, one in each hand, and just ran straight through the room, getting blasted by fire the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's hey, good. hey, Colin, when you dual wield, what 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 are your two weapons you like to bust out? Uh, at that point, I had the, I think I still had the War Axe of Ice from the Druga Overlord in Bleakfold's Barrow, and I had a Skyforge Steel Sword. Very I nice. Uh, I old, oh, in the chest inside Uzagraf, uh, I think you guys are going to hate me, I picked up some steel plate boots of brawn from the chest. Mm. Increases my carry weight by 40. Nice. I actually um, also got some boots of brawn out of that chest as well, Colin. Really? But they were not. They were not steel. They were dwarven boots of boots of brawn. Nice. So uh, that's what I'm wearing right now. Yeah, same here. Yeah, I like carrying those around. They're good boots. <laughs> so um, you get to the last room there, and there's a mysterious note telling you that I've taken the horn. And you're saying, what the F? Why'd you do that? Um, so it's just a mysterious note telling someone, telling you that you have to meet someone 
at the Sleeping Giant Inn in Riverwood. And I said, well, why the F didn't you get a hold of me when I was getting the Golden Claw, like, two <laughs> months ago, you big dummy? If you knew that this, if you knew the, it was predicted in the stars that the Dragonborn was returning, you should have known by then, right? Come on, you didn't learn all this in the last week. Yeah, she could have said something when you brought the Dragonstone to into to White Run. Even that's where you first exactly. Meet her. Like yeah. when you see Delphine in that scene when you're talking to Farangar, you, she should have just said, "Oh wait, hey, it's you." <laughs> that's right. Here's the horn. Here's the horn right now. We don't have to do all the. <laughs> yeah. Don't pay attention to those those old crazy kooks up on the mountain. They have no idea what they're talking about anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So. It gives you a failed mission. At least I got it. When yeah. when you pick up the note, it's like you failed the mission. And I said, wait a second. That's not my fault. Yeah. Damn you, Bethesda. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, in that chest in the last room, I got 226 gold. I got the Spell Tome uh, Candlelight. And I got some Iron Gauntlets as well. And there was about 15 gold uh, just sitting loose in front of the chest. And I also picked that up along with my, my boots. Um, anything happen on the way to Riverwood or anything interesting happen in Riverwood, guys, before you went to talk to Delphine? Uh, I've done a crap ton of stuff. Oh, Thank yeah, you know, let's get that. into it. Yeah, me too. So. Go for well, it. Uh, from there, um, we head to Winterhold. Again, still knowing that, uh, still not knowing that we need to be level 70 to get the expert spells. <laughs> I get so pissed off, I start the mage's quest to see if that will get Drevis to sell me the spells. It doesn't help, but I did grab an elven sword of consuming from the chest and the staff of Jurek Golderson. Nice, but it eats a million soul gems a second. Ooh. After getting hitting the books quest, I head south to kill everyone in Fort Castav for funsies. Doesn't help. I head back to Bree's home for a break and some selling. Colin, did you, did you, does that, uh, Golderson, does that give you a piece of the Golder amulet too? Yes, it does, yeah. Yeah, okay. I thought so. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, uh, no, if I continue on, we'll be here, we'll be here for about another 15 minutes. <laughs> So it's we'll, fine. We've we'll got all the time in the world. <laughs> oh, I, I jotted something down here. You said, um, that you use your muffle already, Colin. Where did you get your muffle? Did you just purchase that at the uh, yeah. college? Yeah, I think, no, I think I purchased that from Farangar, I think. Oh, from Farangar. That's cool. I've been, I've been looking all over for a muffle, and I can't find it anywhere, so maybe I'll go check with uh, Farangar, see if he'll sell me one. Yeah, I think I did. I, I, either I got it from him or from the, I just don't remember, man. I, I take notes, but it started turning into, like, um, first-person story instead of actually actual notes. So, yeah. Because I couldn't <laughs> remember. Got a narrative going. <laughs> yeah. Um, how about something that's enchanted with Muffle? Because I'd rather, you know, disenchant something and learn the enchantment to um, put on my boots because I like to do the carry weight and the Muffle on boots. I, I, I have a necklace of Sneak, which you can also put on your boots, but I'd rather have Muffle instead of Sneak. I don't know why, I just prefer Muffle. Yeah, I mean, if you started, uh, was it the Dark Brotherhood quest, you could get it because uh, all their shoes are all uh, Muffled. Oh, okay. That's a good tip. I will go check out the Dark Brotherhood then. Because I actually, you know, between the first um, the first episode and the second episode, I did the Companions quest. So in between the second and the third episode, I went and did the, um, I also did the Mages Guild. I started, or whatever, the College of Winterhold quest. So um, I am now the... Um, they don't call it the president or master, whatever he is, the leader of the the, the college. The, the Archmage. Uh, yeah, there you go, the Archmage. I've, I've got the Archmage's robes and everything now. but uh, So I should be able to go find something with a muffle on it, but I will definitely go check out the Dark Brotherhood now, see if I can find some, find some of their shoes. <laughs> That'll be cool. Yeah, I actually ended up uh, going from uh, from Riverwood. I decided to heck with the the main quest for a while <laughs> after meeting Delphine. I went to uh, Riften and did a few things. I I, uh, I did the little fetch quest for Mule and uh, picked up Grim Sever and brought it back to her and took her on as a as a follower. I'd never had her as a follower before. She is. 
probably more badass than Uthgird is. She's pretty. Yeah. Can you can you test something for me, uh, Victor, with um, with uh, Mjol? She's uh, like a specific two handed, or is isn't she? Yes. Although uh, uh, it's funny about her. Um, she, uh, according to the stats you get when looking through the uh, amazing follower tweaks, uh, I don't think her two-handed is as good as her as her one-handed. Uh, <laughs> even though she carries a two, a grim is a two-handed sword. Anyway, sorry, go ahead. Uh, I've heard a rumor that uh, you uh, you know the uh, giant hammer that ca- uh, giants carry around with them. Yes. That you can you cannot pick that up yourself, but if you have a two handed follower, you can activate them and then make them pick up the hammer. Yes, I have actually done that with with uh, it was a Gregor. Uh, you can you can't wield it, and I forget exactly which giant camp that's in. I think it's the one um, along the road between uh, the the Nightgale Inn and uh, Dawnstar. I think somewhere up in there. Um, but anyway, uh, it, it, you you can pick it up uh, and then give it to your follower, and then yes, the follower will. Although it seems to me, I saw a video somewhere of somebody actually wielding it in their in their PC with their PC. So I don't I don't know, um, but I will try it with Mule and see if I can get her to. I'll, I'll give you a screenshot. Thanks, man. <laughs> I always forget that you can boss your your followers around to actually doing activities for you, like picking locks and all that. I always end up just doing everything by myself, but I need to start telling them to do more for me, especially if they yeah. can pick up giant hammers and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's really, I mean, it's the, the, the actual weapon isn't all that much more powerful than, than some, you know, advanced two handed swords. It's only it, at least in the, it's leveled at around 100, I think, in, in my playthrough, uh, which is the same as a couple of other things, like Volandrung, the big uh, uh, hammer of Malakath you get uh, when you do the quest over in Riften. Um, Love that hammer. Yeah, it's just pretty cool. Much that, guy's, than a, that guy's a dick. Which one? <laughs> And that to go get the Volandrung, you know, oh, the guy oh, yeah. he tells you to go Demise. kill the giant. He tells you to go kill the giant, but then like he wants to take credit for it, and then he says he's going to kill you if you do this or that. And I was like, man, this guy's a real jerk. Well, one time I I told him, no, I'm not going to kill kill the damn giant. You go do it, and he did. But but the giant killed him. <laughs> ah, that's nice. He flies up in the air, did he? Yeah, he flies up in the air. Yeah, he just just totally disappeared. I, I don't think I ever found him. Yeah, the the giant one shots him. Yeah, yeah. So, so he's not he's not completely useless, but yeah, he's a bit of a <laughs> schmuck. Nice. Uh, so, yeah. What else did I do? I I uh, I did a whole mess of stuff. I did the Shradharth Barrow quest in in Iverstad. Um, Can you tell us a little bit about that one? Uh, that's well. There's a uh, it's sort of a two level quest. You have to go in and uh, determine why. There seems to be a ghost terrorizing the the locals. Uh, it turns out it's not a ghost. Uh, it's just some crazy uh, treasure hunter. Uh, I forget his name now. Um, but when you come back and tell the innkeeper uh, that it really wasn't a ghost, that he's a dumbass and uh, he should have been a little more courageous and gone in there, uh, he says, well, that's great. Thank you very much. And he gives you a claw. And so you go back into the barrow and use the claw to get into the, the second half of the dungeon. Um, and, and after that, it's all a blank. I don't remember what I did. I don't remember what I got out of it. I just remember coming out of it with a little richer than I was when I went in. Um, and uh, so I, I did that. But, um, where else have I been? Uh, I I did, oh, laid to rest. I went to Morthal. I did that. That's the little girl who who's killed by the vampire. I think isn't that the one? Um, yeah. And uh, I'm looking on finding Carjo now because I have his moon amulet. Um, so I may I may actually pick up Carjo as well as a follower. That should be fun. I've never I've never had him before. Uh, he's really good with um, the uh, audio commentary. He's quite yeah. Good. Yeah, I've, seen, I've I've heard some of that, of course, from the playthroughs. But uh, uh, 
So, and, and I also, I guess all of us have done the, the Mages College. I, I haven't completed it yet, but I'm, I, I have been to, I think it's Mzolft where you, you go to, you don't end up getting the staff, you, but you work that, it. that mirror mechanism or whatever it is that, that you have to turn in various different directions. Yeah. So that's about as far as I've gotten to that right now. Do you guys remember the movie The Dark Crystal? Oh, God, I saw that so long ago. I remember seeing it. It was a Jim Henson production back in the day, and the at one point the Gelfling goes to this old witch with one eye, and uh, she's in this tower and has, like, this big spinning thing with all these globes and worlds revolving around it. And <laughs> that, that instrument reminded me a lot of that scene from uh, That's The cool. Dark Crystal. I'll have to go back and watch that. Hey, it, we have it on our DVD shelf. I, I think it stands up. I get made fun of for a lot of the movies I watch, but I like that sort of thing. I know. I remember watching that. A good, well, well-produced stuff like that always holds up. Doesn't matter whether it's puppets yeah. or CG. Um, yep. But that. Do you know what that instrument was called, um, Colin? With that the big, the big instrument with the revolving pieces that you have to heat up or cool down. Um, I don't remember what it's called. <laughs> no, uh, I know you get the focusing crystal off the the Mac Daddy Farmer. Yeah, um, it took me a while to find that. I had to go back and search all the dead bodies. I was just like, oh, this is. I must have killed one and then had another one attack me, so I didn't have time to you know loot the one that was dead on the ground. So I, you know, had missed one of the bodies when I was looking. So I had to go back through and find. It. I've done that before with you know, like I think one of the claws or something like that. I, I was like, why the hell can I not get through this door? And then eventually I went back and searched all the dead bodies and found one of the claws. And I was like, oh, this is because I needed a key. I'm a dumb. Yeah. What did you get into in there, Colin? Um, from where, what the uh, mages guild quest. Yeah, we could, we could, yeah. Doing the mages guild quest, the, uh, and Mazolft. Do you have uh, fun I, in the book? You have you got there yet? Uh, let's see. Yeah, I'll, oh yeah, I've done that. Where where is it? Uh, no, I've done that, but that was like recently after I finished all. Uh, so I got like loads of stuff in front of that. Yeah, go ahead. Go. Uh, let's backtrack a little bit and catch up with uh, where you left off last. Uh, okay. So where is it? Uh, yeah. So I bring Nettlebane back to. Uh, like I missed some stuff before. I went to go and get Nettlebane with Lydia, and okay. we found the. Can you explain um, what Nettlebane is, real quick. Uh, when you go into right one, you, uh, you see the big tree, and it's letting, looking old and decrepit. So uh, somebody mentions, like if you go into the bar, uh, mentions that you should talk to Danica about the tree and getting it looking a little bit better. So you talk to her, and she says that there is a way to get it back up to what it used to be. But uh, you need some sap from the parent tree, and to be able to cut into that tree, you're going to need a, a weapon that's made by the hag ravens called Nettlebane that they use for sa- uh, sacrificing spriggans. Um, so you have to go up to Hag's End Rock or something rock uh, to go and get Nettlebane from the hag ravens. And Danica is the, um, the priestess. See the priestess there by, by the temple that's... Oh, yeah, priestess of Kinnereth. Kinnereth, that's right, yeah. So um, she tells you to go off and find Nettlebane. Yeah, so you go and get Nettlebane. Uh, when, when I got Nettlebane, I found... Um, where is it? Uh, uh, Meridius Beacon. In the oh, Earth. wow. Huh, popped up there. Yeah. So, I just recently learned that Meridia's Beacon is kind of randomly placed throughout the game. I thought that you would get it from the same place each time, but evidently they swap that around where you can pick that up. Yeah, yeah I found it in some vampire cave under an island once. That's uh, like, so, yeah, it's, it's, yeah. Oh, is that, uh, so I bring, so now we get to the one where I bring it back to Danica. And she Was, uh, to go. Sorry to interrupt again. Was Nettlebane conveniently on the way to the the parent tree? Uh, no, because you've got to get it, and then you've got to bring it back again, because you, okay. you're bringing it back to Danica, because uh, you've got to go, oh, well, here you go, there's Nettlebane, go and get 
go and get your sap. And she's like, well, I don't want to touch that thing. <laughs> I didn't expect you to come back. I was like, oh. Nice. Or she says something like, oh, I would, but I'm busy or something. <laughs> <laughs> why, why wouldn't she want to touch it? Is it a, a, a Daedric artifact? Um, not that I know of. It looks very similar to a, um, I should say, uh, uh, an ebony dagger, but I wouldn't. It, I don't think it's actually Daedric. It's not very powerful. I know that much. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I bring Nettlebane to Danica, and she asks me to go and get the Elder Green uh, sap. Uh, I see Ayla, and she sends me after some silver hand plans in the rift. It's far, but close to Fawn Guard, so it works for me. Mm-hmm. I also pick up a giant bounty near Vault Time Tower. So decide to grab the books for Ureg on the way too. Nice. Six birds, one long ass walk. <laughs> but uh, we pick up an extra, Maurice Jondrell. Kind of fruity, but I don't judge. <laughs> we make our way to Falglo Keep and lose Maurice on the way to a bear. I offered him some armor, but he wouldn't hear of it. Kids. <laughs> uh, I clear fell glue and get the books, but not much else of note. Same with the giant camp, except to find a book in the cave called The Knights of the Nine. I don't recall ever seeing that one before. Uh, Voltheim Towers is a different story. I picked up lots of gold off the fools, then got hit with the lucky stick to find a pair of ebony boots in their chest. Nice. I might finally be rid of this annoying light armor. I might get to the Elder Gleam Sanctuary and meet a couple of fruitcakes warning me away. I think I have some go- uh, gold coming my way, so I ignore them. Whoops. Hippie 1 and Hippie 2 go down after I grab the sap. But I get a staff of healing and a set of steel plate armor of eminent destruction, so I call it Ow. a win. Huh. Yeah, that's mighty. Good job. Uh, do you want me to continue or should I stop? No, please go ahead. Uh, all right. uh, I come outside to hear a dragon. I think I was sneaking on, but I was sneaking on by, but those greybeards got under my skin with that dragonborn business. We take it down. Lydia, the Atronarch, and me with Jurek's staff. Luckily, I grabbed the soul trap spell from Farangar a while ago, because this only has five good shots in it before it needs recharging. Wow. We take him. I took. We take him down, and I use the souls to learn the fire breath show. I head over to his perch to find another word of power, Frost Breath, and see a chest and grab the Helmet of Alchemy. That'll be handy. Yes, it will. Wow. Do you have a preference versus the Fire Shout or the Frost Shout? Uh, the Fire Shout, because it works really well against vampires. I don't remember it being this powerful. I was walk- walking up and like hitting, like, and I only have the first word hitting uh, bandits with it and taking the health three quarters of the way down. Wow. Nice. I don't remember the fire spell, the fire breath um, shout ever being that strong. Yeah, I remember trying it the first time I played through and feeling like it didn't do a damn thing, so I never used it again, but uh, obviously yeah, the, I was wrong. Yeah, the only thing I can think of is that I got it really early because I'd done the, um, what do we call it, the... Uh, the companion's quest, and that's where you find the very first word, uh, is with uh, Farkas when you're doing um, that. Uh, what's the one? What's the early one with Farkas that you go to do? Uh, Blood's honor or something like that. Yeah, and um, that's where you get the fire breath. So maybe it's because I started using it really early, and the last time I used it maybe was later on after you do and get higher ups. You're up against higher up enemies, got more health. It doesn't work as well. Mm-hmm. Well, that would make sense. I, in a previous playthrough, I that was my favorite shout. That's the one I used the most was the fire fire breath mm-hmm. one. I used to, I used to love that one. But um, how many dragons have each of you come across and killed so far in your round round table characters? Uh, I have killed nine. Nine. Well, Victor, do you know how many you've killed offhand? Yeah, I've only I've only killed uh, five so far, and uh, I'm not sure. Why there's they just don't seem to be uh, rising uh, a whole lot. Uh, I, I don't, did. Oh, go ahead, sorry. Uh, I don't think they spawn uh, randomly until we see Alduin at Kynesgrove. 
Oh, okay. Oh, okay. That makes sense because uh, I I loaded up uh, Deadly Dragons recently and and haven't really had much uh, satisfaction with that either. So that that's probably why. You know, if when you when you go to um, the word walls, they, you'll find them there. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. But to be randomly spawned in the world, I think we have to wait until we've been to Kynes Grove and met okay. Alduin, and then he starts raising all the other ones. Oh, that makes sense. Wow. Yeah, that makes sense. I didn't think about that. I've only faced two dragons so far. Uh, one was at the uh, the Western Watchtower outside of Whiterun, and the other one was the skeletal dragon inside of uh, Labyrinthian. Yeah. When I was doing the mage quest, those are the only two dragons that I've even seen. Huh. So, I haven't gone to find um, you know many of their their burial spots yet, or any so far. So. Yeah, like Colin said, I, I, I sought a few out at, at the word walls, uh, and I don't remember if I got one of those from Arngear, uh, you know, because he'll, he'll tell you where uh, the disturbance in the force is. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so you can go, uh, all the time. All <laughs> and the time. <laughs> and then there's bounty quests that will t- take you to various dragons as well. Yeah, I've actually just got my first bounty for a dragon, and then I have the Iron Gear assigned dragon that I need to go take care of. So I do have two more that I can go find, but as of now, the only shouts I have are the ones that have been granted to me from the Greybeards. So I need more dragons in my life. <laughs> And Colin, I felt like I interrupted you. Were you going on with your story there? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I'm quite happy to go on with my story as long as I'm please not boring you guys. Please do. No, no, please do. Very interesting. Um, uh, I head south towards Riften and pass through Shore Stone. I find some dead storm cloaks. Imperial bastards. <laughs> I check the bodies and find an amulet of Talos and take it. Oh, nice. I promise revenge for him and my brother. I make it to Riften, but don't head inside. I circle around and go into Broken Helm Hollow to retrieve the Silver Hand plans. Easy. I go ahead and frenzy the Silver Hand leader, and she takes out everybody else. I go back for Lydia, and she faces her head on while I attack her from the side. Need more stamina. These guys are getting tougher. But that was probably the Nordic carved armor she was wearing. Nice. Thank you very yes, much. Yes, very nice. I get to Fort Dongard, and a man East Rome wants me to check out some cave the vill- vigilants are babbling about. I have a look around and grab a crossbow. I spot an armored dog. Uh, seems brave, but ain't willing to follow me yet. I'll check on him uh, the next time I'm back. Maybe the wolf blood has him spooked. <laughs> I head back to right one to drop off a lot of stuff. I give Danica the sap and nothing. Not even one lousy septum. <laughs> wow. I go to see the that idiot in uh, Yorvaska. Turns out she's as good at keeping secrets as she is at fighting. The old man chews my ass off about vengeance and then sends me off to get the vengeance on the ones responsible for making him a werewolf. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I hop to it. The old guy seems to like me, and I him. If he wants Sovereign Guard, I'll get it for him. As long as he doesn't expect me to follow suit, I'm good. Uh, uh, I take out the witches alone. It was tough, but I got it done. I head back to Yorvaska only to find the old man got taken out by the silver hand. The idiot woman tells me that they got most of them, but I only see one dead body. And that's <laughs> dark. Uh, and... Uh, and that dark elf lying on the floor. Does that guy ever win? <laughs> One of the kids tries to get into it with me, but I don't bite, and I don't give up what Kodlek was up to. He quickly switches his target, and we're off to a final showdown with the silver hand. Good. I might be new here, but I put anything in the ground that messes with what's mine. It's done. The silver hand is all but wiped out, and we grabbed all the pieces of thread. I think the kid Vilkas is not proud of what we did at Drift Shade, but it has to be done. And when we get back to the funeral, it's a big affair. A big affair. Even Bargrove, that imperial sympathizer, showed. Uh, Yorland asked me for the last piece of the axe. While grabbing it, I see uh, the old man's diary. He didn't see the type. It made for difficult reading, but it cleared my mind of a few things. I may not follow his path of honor, but I do respect it. 
the blacksmith gives us the chance to still finish the old man's last request, and the other three take off like arrows to East Grimoire's tomb. I agree to meet them there. Uh, I've got more, but uh, it's starting to get a bit dry. <laughs> oh, that's, I don't think it's dry at all. I'm enthralled. Um, you want me to go on? No, you can go on. My next move would be um, to dis- discuss what I did in Riverwood. So until you get up to Riverwood, just go ahead and tell us what you've done until you get there. Uh, okay. Uh, I... I I uh, I stop by the uh, I stop by the college and finally grab some new spells from Drevis. He has some upgrades and he has invisibility. Nice, but I still don't think I'm ready. I go east and wander into Stillborn Cave. It's full of farmer there, not quite like everything else I'll fight, and to help me learn a few things about how illusion works. I need a droga, a vampire, something not living. I come outside and get attacked by some random guy after what it se- and after what seemed like an hour, I get him down. I find a book of Boethi on him. I don't take too kindly to being attacked, so I slip down the side of Windhelm uh, to the peak opposite. I sneak up and find a bunch of freaks armed to the teeth. I don't like it, especially this close to Ulfric and the Stormcloak HQ. I hit them all with frenzy, and I was right to be worried. It takes ages to get them down to one. I hit him with route and chase him all across the mantle until I put him, all across the mountain until I put him down, only to find out that Boethia was watching all over all these guys. Great. I remember the book and give the I did it because I wanted to line and it seemed to. Uh, she asked for a sacrifice and a certain idiot comes to mind. I'll see. She might know more about this werewolf stuff, so I'll hold back for now. I head west. And while avoiding some ice wolves, I stumble upon a red guard and our pet Argonian outside some ruins. I head inside using them as cover. I try it for a, for the first time. Success. The fear spell worked on the Droga. We get all the way through to the ruin, <coughs> only to find the biggest Droga I've ever seen. I hand back some, but he's too strong for the girl. I hit his friends with frenzy and the whole thing goes to hell as everyone attacks everyone. I throw an Atronach into the mix. Well, just cause. We get it done, and, my, and the Argonian, Argonian turns on us. I'm not surprised, but the kid takes it to heart and tears up. Uh, I pop up an at, another Atronach and load her up with courage and healing as she needed it, and let her take him out, lest she get all sentimental and turn on me too. I score an ebony sword from Gathric. Very nice. Um, I still got like loads and loads more. Do you want to pause and like talk about something else for a little bit? Um, I just had a question. If you cast Fury and you have a follower, will your follower attack you? Um, it will affect them. Yes. Uh, okay. I didn't think it did because I used to do it um, to Lydia all the time on my mm-hmm. on my original character. I want to use Mayhem, the Master spell, and she never attacked me. But uh, when I cast it on Aethis. He he did go for me. Wow. Hmm. And did you immediately cast a calm to yeah. try to counteract that? Is that I is think that... I had yeah, I think I had pacify, which is like area of of effect. Okay. Frenzy is like area effect, so if you get close to him you can get three or four people at the same time. Oh, that's nice. That's great. Um Victor, what uh, you said you got into a bunch of stuff before heading to Riverwood too. Do you have any little adventures you like to describe as well? Um well First of all, heading to Riverwood. Which which part of heading to heading to Riverwood are we are we talking uh, about? Before you um, talk to Delphine and she reveals the, um, you know that. Uh, oh, I see. Okay, yeah. Uh, no, actually, I I uh, I let's see. Where did I go with that? I I think. Yeah, I went off to like I said. I went off and and picked up a mule. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I went and spent more time building on Helljarkin and hanging out there. Um, what sort of additions did you add? What, what do you like to do with your construction? Let's get into the house construction a little bit. <laughs> well, this one, uh, I like I like having the greenhouse, so I always build a greenhouse. What do you um, like to plant in your greenhouse? Oh, you have whatever, a specific whatever. alchemical agreement, uh, ingredients that you like to use? Well, you're kind of limited. You can't plant anything, so... Uh, um, but I usually just plant the the somewhat 
less uh, common stuff, whatever I can, whatever I can plant. Uh, and you can you can unplant and replant things, you know, as much as you want. Uh-huh. I but mostly I just do the greenhouse for ambience. I don't really. Oh, you don't use it for time. alchemy. Well, I do, but you know, the, yeah. it, it takes them a long time to grow and respond. It's quicker just to run around the countryside and pick things. That's very uh, true. So I just do it because I like having the greenhouse. Um, I, have, you I ever, have, have you ever done this thing where you wait to see how long it'll actually take for the stuff to respawn in there, where you just like look at your garden and wait 24 hours, <laughs> look at your garden and wait 24 hours? I think I looked that up once, but the, one of the problems with waiting when you're playing under mods like uh, Realistic Needs and Diseases and stuff like that is that you you are required. You have to you have to eat, you have to to uh, sleep, uh, and and waiting just becomes tedious. It's it's almost in fact uh, those mods make even um, fast travel kind of a pain in the butt because uh, also. Well, fast travel takes time. I mean, it can take as many as six to eight hours uh, in, in you know, quote, real game time, unquote. Uh, so you end up at the end of a fast. I mean, you can wake up in the morning, uh, fast travel to, to some place, and you get there the next evening, and you end up having to sleep again. You know, it's, it's, oh, yeah. Um, so... Uh, so anyway, as far as the, the the greenhouse goes, I just I just use it as it's just nice to look at with the sun beams streaming in the windows and the, and after a while, if you leave the greenhouse alone for a long time, you end up with butterflies and bugs and bees and everything else running around in there. It's it's very nice. There's a lot of nice you know, background noise from all of that. Um, I I never build the uh, towers because you end up if you furnish. Especially if you have your steward furnish the house, you end up with an alchemy table and an enchanting table anyway. Uh, so there's no use having the, the enchanting towers. Um, sometimes I build a library, but this time I built the kitchen and I built the trophy room. I think I don't remember now. <laughs> yeah, very nice. Room, the trophy room. So I've never uh, built a kitchen. Uh, the kitchen is great. It's been, again, with with a couple of the mods I'm using, I have a lot of extra recipes and things. But but even without those, uh, the kitchen has you know the fireplace and an oven, so you can bake bread and you can do all kinds of cool uh, cool things with with cooking. Make uh, elsewhere fondue, which is actually a Ooh, really good yeah, recipe. That that I forget exactly what buffs it gives you, but they're they last a long time and they're mostly magic related. I think. Do you know? Do you remember Colin? What what the no, else, I remember. Else, the, yeah, I remember the name, but I can't remember what it does. Yeah. I've never actually eaten it, but I do remember it was the the best of all the the things that you can get. Yeah, it, it requires moon sugar to make, which isn't all that common. But uh, yeah, but yeah, it's 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 anyway. So the cooking is a lot of fun in Skyrim. If you can sort of punch any kajit and some moon sugar will fall out. Trust <laughs> yeah, that's right. I was yep. gonna say, does if it's called elsewhere fondue, does that mean it's made out of cat milk? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just no, it's moon sugar. Uh, I can't remember what else besides cheese there is in it, but uh, it's uh, it's good. So that's that's what I've I've, I've built with Heliarchan, and I've, I added a couple of small mods just to add some extra lights to the outside of it. And uh, um, I'm actually thinking about messing with the creation kit to see if I can uh, work a few extra things into that cell uh, for my own use. Like what? Um, Oh, some extra trees, perhaps, just to make oh, the whole thing yeah. look a little nicer. You know, it's it's a, it's actually. I mean, I like Lakeview Manor, but but Helyarkin, in terms of location, is probably the nicest. Has the nicest views for sure. Yes, um, I, I like the views you get of the Dragon's Reach and the um, the High Hrothgar. Yeah, yeah the really mountain in the distance is very nice. Yeah. So, uh, so I'm kind of enjoying being there, and, and I'm sort of populating it now. I, I'm probably going to adopt, as I usually do, uh, Lucia, and then probably Sophie as well. So, I have to uh, work on that. Yeah. Uh, that's the first two kids I adopted as well. My very first playthrough. Yeah, yeah. My Again, first playthrough, I just got two kids from the uh, the Riften orphanage. I, I just took the first two that approached me. And then you then you wanted to bring them back, if I remember correctly. Yes, I wanted to return them. <laughs> yeah. Just because the, 
at that point, I was dealing with my whole dog bug, and the boy kept asking to pet my dog, which was non-existent. So I was, I was getting upset with him. I wanted to return him. That's a pain. Yeah. I don't know why. I, I, well, probably because I have daughter and granddaughters, and so on. I always adopt girls. Uh, I never, never adopt boys. Um, but uh, the only other one besides Sophie or Lucia that I that I have adopted is the little girl who's the daughter of the innkeepers in Winterhold. Because in one of my playthroughs, I managed to uh, get a snow bear to chase me into town, and then trying to get away from it, I ran into the inn, and the snow bear followed me in and killed everybody in the inn, <laughs> except the little girl. That's so, great. Uh, oh, so it actually the game actually knows who the parents are, and if the parents were both dead, then that child will then become available for adoption? That's correct, and, and wow. in fact, uh, I that was my Khajiit playthrough, and I didn't even have a play. That's the one that I was living in, Anissa's cabin, and uh, I didn't have a place for her to stay, so I ran off and made lots of money and built a house and got it all ready for her, and when I went back to uh, uh, to Winterhold, she was gone, and I, I finally tracked her down at the orphanage in Riften. Oh, wow. Uh, Holy so, cow. Yeah, the game does keep track of them. It's pretty cool. That's great. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, if you're ever planning to, um, it's very unpopular, but if you're ever planning to, um, was it kill Parthenax, like follow in the blade's footsteps, uh, or do what they say, I'd never, ever, ever, ever talk to Sissel in Raw Extend. Ever. What she, happens? Uh, uh, she she says something that makes you feel like humongously guilty. <laughs> uh, well, I've heard I read uh, a lot of people who because um, her sister keeps on beating her up and her dad I think beats on her as well. Oh, so dear. I've heard a lot of people who uh, who kill her dad, so she ends up being orphaned and then they can adopt her. Oh, oh nice. Because uh, yeah, apparently she's getting a real bad time of it in Rorikstead. Hmm. Child abuse is never pretty. <laughs> I just wanted, sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. Uh, I was going to say the, the only other thing, I, I mentioned earlier on that I did this that whole tour through the north uh, doing minor quests uh, uh, with, uh, with Cosmac, but uh, the other thing that I've started in between uh, Riverwood and and the last part of the the, the Horn quest is the um, uh, the Ethereum Forge because uh, I found I found the book and read it and it sounded pretty cool so we we've gone off to uh, and I've taken uh, I ended up taking Koznak and and her name the orc that I uh, got in, in at Morkasgur is Borgak. I forgot. That's her name. Yeah, I think isn't she somebody else's fo- uh, follower? I remember hearing that somewhere in one of the one of our roundtables. Oh goodness, I'm not sure. Yeah, uh, I think um, y- uh, uh, Yana ran into her and was going to oh, ask. Is that what it was? Her. Okay. Uh, in one of her updates, I'm sure she said she ran into her and she was going to ask her to come with her, but then it was something about like leaving her clan, so she didn't want to. Okay. I don't know whether it's yeah. anybody. Yeah, you end up paying her dowry. That's how you get her to leave. So, so how far you got on the um, the uh, Ethereum Forge? Have you? Oh, I uh, I have. I had already picked up one shard, uh, and so I've I've gone through the the first, which is Arkham Tham or whatever it is, uh, <laughs> and. Um, it's funny, you know, uh, and this is, uh, again, sort of an aside, but I've had two playthroughs now on, uh, now I'm trying to think, it's it's the same, yeah, it's the same core game. See, I use a thing called Skyrim Installation Manager, which, which actually uh, creates uh, discrete installations uh, of the game, uh, but uh, so I have I have one I'm playing with a mod called Requiem, which is a totally different uh, thing than Skyrim and another, a couple others. But this one that I play with with Slyth is is I'm sharing it with my other character Willem, and uh, both of them are totally separate saves from from the beginning. But both of them that uh, Ethereum Forge, the the first quest there, where you first meet Katria. And when you get to the top of the the ruin, 
uh, they both glitched there. And Willem's uh, quest, in fact, glitched so badly that I cannot do Ethereum Forge. And uh, um, the uh, the Slyth playthrough, what happens is the the uh, the, the Centurion in there gets uh, stuck inside the gates and doesn't come out. So you can't kill him, but then everybody aggros, so you can't get them away from him. Oh. Uh, and the the first one with Willem, uh, Katria got all aggroed, and, and I could not get her to split off. I couldn't get her to walk into the back where the shard is and say, oh, well, that's great, and I'll see you later. Uh, she just wouldn't leave. So, uh, And I tried everything I could, even with the console, um, and with this one, uh, I managed to get Katria finished and she left, but my two followers got all aggroed with, with the, with the Centurion and he's stomping away inside the gates and I could, couldn't get him. So I ended up resorting to the console with that one and just killed him <laughs> with, with a console command. Um, that's convenient. You can do that. It's handy. Yeah. Because, uh, I, although in my 360 playthroughs that I've done, I've never had a problem in there. Uh, it just seems to be on the PC for some reason. I don't know what it is about this save or this huh. particular game installation that, that's, uh, well, I've noticed uh, when I, uh, on the PC one, when I went into Blackreach, uh, all the centurions activated automatically. Really? I went anywhere near them. On my Xbox version, I'd have to go and actually pull the lever or attack them to activate them. Really? Is that what happened in the Ethereum Verge when you got that the Centurion just activated it on, on its own? Uh, no, I think one of the, it's possible that the reason it's because I've done so many playthroughs. I know the sequence for that tonal lock. Yeah, yeah. So I don't. I just go ahead and bang, <laughs> bang, 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 and so the gate doesn't open. Uh, huh. So I think maybe the next time I will try, uh, um, or maybe I'll just go back because I'm not that far along with it. Maybe I'll just go back to a previous save and start it again and see if if that does it. If just you know doing it wrong once so that he comes out, then killing him, and then going back and doing it right might just you know advance the quest to the right spot. There you um, go. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's you know that's the problem with with doing certain things too many times, you know, you know, the answer. Uh, so exactly. It's just like going up to 7,000 steps. You just kind of brushed by all the, uh, the tablets there. didn't take a stop to read them. I, I also did the same thing. I rushed up the, the ste- 7,000 steps too. Yeah. I'm going to have to, in fact, I was thinking about that yesterday when I, when I was playing a little bit and, you know, I, I really need to, uh, role play it a little better, you know, just, Pretend that I've never done this before. It's it, it makes things more fun. You know, don't click through all the dialogue. You know, listen to the dialogue and. and I'm make... horribly guilty of skipping through dialogue. Yeah, I'm like, shut <laughs> yeah. up! Shut up! Shut up! Let's go. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. So, I think I'm gonna make an effort to do that. Yeah. Um, That's cool. Yeah. Your adventures with the Ethereum Forge. Um, yeah. Well, I'm looking forward to the crown because that allows you to have uh, two stones in effect. Yes, that yeah. is a very good bonus. What are the other options, though, besides the Ethereum crown? There's a staff. What's uh, the staff do for you? Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Victor. No, I, I, I can't remember what the other one is. Uh, the staff uh, summons either a spider or a sphere, I think. Yeah. Uh, I know it's a spider. I think it's also sometimes a sphere as well. Uh, and then you've got the uh, the shield, which if you bash somebody with the shield, it makes them... Um, ethereal, you know, like your ethereal shirt that makes you like the weapons can't harm you. Mm-hmm. The shield does that to your enemy. So you bash them and then you can't kill them. Yeah, but they <laughs> they can't hurt you. Oh, okay. So you have time to pull, like you know, when you're ethereal, um, when you use the shout, you you can't heal yourself. If you heal yourself, then you're going to um. They dissipate the ethereal, the, the ethereal effect. Yeah, you pop back to normal. Yeah, but uh, if you make them ethereal while they're uh, ethereal, you can heal yourself, or you can run away, or you can summon up an Atronach while they're sort of like you know can't do anything until they come back. I think it only lasts like five or ten seconds or something. Mm-hmm. Like that. Mm. 
Well, in my last playthrough, I'm playing a, a robot character as well who's obsessed with the uh, Dwemer everything. So I did the Ethereum Forge with that character, and I took the staff just because I thought it would be cool to be able to summon a, uh, a little spider whenever I needed help. But Is now that just- you mentioned the crown, that's that I probably should have gone with that. The crown seems more useful. I think of the three, it's the more the most lastingly useful, if you want to put it that way. Uh, the other ones are fun, but but they don't seem all that practical in the long run. Well, yeah, now the staff is just sitting on my wall in the trophy room. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Well, what good is it doing me there? I should have taken that damn crown. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I figure between that and, and the Spellbreaker shield, uh, the crown and the shield, it uh, makes a pretty powerful... Um, Combination, but I'm not going to do the Spellbreaker Shield because Slythe is uh, definitely an enemy of Periite. It wants nothing to do with helping Periite in any way. Yeah, okay. So <laughs> that's all part of the role play, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Colin, did you have more uh, story to continue on with your adventure there? Well, yeah, so, um, so I, I just uh, finished off with Gathric and like pulled his ebony sword off him, so that was good. Mm-hmm. Um, so now I'm ready. And I head to East Grimoire's tomb and meet up with the others. We head inside and just as well I figured out how to influence a dead, as that's what we had to do to get to the old man. We lose Vilka straight away. Better off. His head wasn't <laughs> right for this one. No wonder we nearly, uh, uh, ne- no wonder nearly all the elves got taken out. These companions are tough. But it wasn't that that scares off Farkas, but the spiders. It's just me. It's just me and the idiot left. Great. <laughs> the last two rooms aren't so bad. I let the ghosts take themselves out while the idiot hits them with arrows and the Atronach burns them up. Nice. We cure the old man and he makes mention of me being the new Arbinger. I ask the idiot and she doesn't seem to mind, so I go with it. I score some good stuff from the chest, including a shield and an ebony bow. I can't carry it at all, so I asked the idiot, and she had grabbed me to carry the stuff back home. Enjoy, Sovereign Guard, old man. You deserve it. On our way back to Whiterun, I stop by the college again and pick up on what's been happening there. I speak to the monk again, who didn't make any sense. Then to a ball of light, that didn't make sense. <laughs> then to Savos, who didn't seem to know what was going on. <laughs> and then finally spoke to Mirabel and got some real answers and an intelligent conversation. Then she sends me to, Z- to Mizulft. Then I realize I can't be bothered and I head back to Whiterun. I get back to Whiterun and after sorting out a few things, I head up to Yorvaska to see that dark elf again. I want to see why he was allowed in in the first place. So I tell him I need some help and to come with me. I saw him out with some uh, elven gilded armor and a crossbow, amongst other upgrades, and head off to Dim Hollow Crypt and see what's up with these vampires. We go through Dim Hollow pretty easily. The illusion works a treat on vampires too. We get past them all only to find one trapped in a box. I don't know why I didn't just kill her and take her fancy pants scroll, but I didn't. It was just as well. Turns out she's a pretty decent fighter, as we found out when we tried to leave the crypt, only to come across another huge drug or death overlord, where I also found out that the moron Dark Elf fights better in heavy armor and nearly got me killed by going down after six hits. We get it done, and I give him the ebony axe I pulled after Droga, seeing as he became intimately acquainted with it as it many times <laughs> during the fight. <laughs> I agree to take the vampire to a castle to see what's what and get some <laughs> intel for Eastran. Not my dis- greatest decision, but there you go. Before I take her there, I stop by Meridia's shrine after Aethys makes himself useful and lets me know how much she hates undead. Uh, she can't hate him that much if she let the vampire in. <laughs> I collect a nice bit of coin in the runes and take out the necromancer by making him fight his own summon shades. The vampire... Oh, nice. The vampire and the dark elf did the rest. Not a bad reward either. A weapon specifically designed to destroy undead. Hopefully the vampire took note of that. (laughs) I bring the vampire to a castle and finally see what's going on. Whoops. This is about to get nasty. Luckily the girl girl vouches for me and I make it out. I tell Aethys what's going on and we make a straight run for, for Dawnguard. 
That was one hell of a trek, but well worth it. After stopping by right one to grab that Nordic carved armor for Athis, we continued on past Falkreath, and I ran into a mercenary in ebony armor. He mentioned something about trouble ahead, and I told him to tell me about it. He then became hostile, and I had to put him down, all legal and above board. <laughs> I got some ebony armor and decided to switch it with my current garb right there and then. Ah, very nice. I returned to Isran to let him know what happened, only to have my ass chewed off again. Then he <laughs> mentioned getting help, and I agreed. I went in to see that dog again, but to no avail. I left in search of Isran's former colleagues. Gonmar was not uh, too far, but the great Breton girl was miles away, so I didn't stop along the way. I ran all the wa- I ran all the way there, all the while hit on hitting bears and spiders and bandits with pacify, only to realize that I'd have to do it all again on the way back because I didn't <laughs> kill the bastards. <clears throat> Success. I returned to Fort Dongard, and after a little test by Isran to see if I was a vampire, idiot, I headed over to the dog again. Gunma must have the magic touch, because this time he did follow me. Nice. I went upstairs to see what Isran wanted to see about, and only to see the vampire again. She wanted to join me again to put a stop to whatever her father is up to. But she didn't want Aethys along for the ride, so I refused and told her to wait until I came back. I still wanted to find out what this, Arga, what this dark elf could do. And that was it. That's <laughs> very nice. That's great. Yeah, I am... Um... When I went to Fort Dongard, I had to go get his two recruits, and that's, you know, in order to get the troll or anything to follow you out of Fort Dongard, you have to go recruit to, to, yeah. what's his name? Iskar? No. What's his name? Uh, Gunma. Yeah, you have to go get him and then a lady, too. Uh, Serene Gerard. Yeah. You bring those back. It was, it was the dog and troll trainer? Uh, no, the dogs were already there. When I, oh, first, okay. when I first showed up, uh, the dogs were already there. Uh, like uh, the, the only people that were there were Isran, the orc, and that kid that you meet on the way in. Right, but the yeah. dog, Bran, was already there, but he just wouldn't follow me. No. Sounds like um, you guys could have your own little sitcom over there in Fort Dongard, Gunvar and Gunmar together. <laughs> and, like, <laughs> like bosom buddies or something. Yeah. So that that's great. So um, that's as far as you've gotten with the Dawn Guard. Did you do any other adventuring? Uh, yeah, loads, but I I didn't make note of that um, because I got sidetracked with work. Uh, but oh, after man. screw work. Uh, so I, I was I'm currently um, level forty. Um, oh, wow! So I've got my um, my illusion is a hundred. My one handed is a hundred. I was going to ask, um, you said that it was a drawback running past all those bears and casting your illusion spells, um, but that would help you if you could do it on the way there and on the way back. That's probably a... Uh... Yeah, but I kept on dying halfway through. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Are you a frequent I... saver? Uh, not frequent enough. Yeah, it can never be frequent enough uh, when you're yeah. coming up against those bastard bears. Yeah. Kill them all, I say. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> yeah. Well, do you have any other interesting adventures in there as well, Victor? <laughs> Not really. Um, let's see. Just uh, no, nothing. Nothing of consequence. Um, cool. I did Elder Gleam as well. I, I went. I, well, I did the Wolf Skull Cave thing for uh, Falk Firebeard, um, and uh, I also went and got the Nostor's helmet for him. So I wanted to do a good deed, um, but we're uh, we're we're working up to go. Uh, I, I have to say, you know, Slythe has started to, uh, uh, I guess, mellow a little bit. You know, he was an assassin for for most of his career, and and uh, he had intended fully to take Koznak and uh, sacrifice him to Boethia, but. He's kind of changed his mind, so now we have to figure out whether we even want to do the Boethia quest or not. So uh, that's our current dilemma. Yeah. 
Well, I saw Colin's picture of his brand new armor, and I was I was like, "Ooh, that's very nice." So I tried to I was trying to discuss with him where he got that, but he wouldn't tell me until today's little adventure. So that's very nice, Colin. So it was yeah. a mercenary that you killed and took all of his ebony armor. Hey, he attacked me first. Uh, he he was asking for it. I see. I was assuming that you had um, gone to Boethia already and gotten the her armor that will. Um, Basically, no, do the I'm, vampire thing, doesn't it? Absorb health, basically. Uh, no, uh, when you're yeah, well, but when you're sneaking, it gets that black mist and it causes poison damage. Oh, nice. Yeah. When I think it's also it. male, isn't it? It's light armor instead of heavy armor. Oh, know? cool. I think I'm not sure of that. Um, it's called male, but I'm I'm sure it's heavy armor. Is it still I, heavy I, armor? I, I had it in the on my second playthrough. Mm-hmm. I think. But um, I, I, on my very first playthrough, I just went there after that guy attacked me, and uh, I was just like, and then she went, "Oh, kill somebody!" And I went, "What?" And then I just <laughs> took out my warm hammer and I just started like laying waste to the entire place. <laughs> so I decided to do that on. Uh, I thought Gun uh, Gunbar was exactly the same type. He just get there, and I mean, he didn't even listen to him. He just saw them like. Uh, sort of like fighting each other and they all looked like a bunch of freaks. He didn't even speak to any of them. He just shot them all up with frenzy and let them all kill each other. Oh, yeah, that yeah. one last guy. <laughs> yeah, I, I did pretty close to the same thing in my first playthrough. I just killed them all. But then I ended up... Who did I sacrifice? Oh, I that's right, because I, I, I married uh, Camilla, but uh, Findall kept sniffing around and <laughs> coming into Lakeview Manor and and just appearing there I'd get I'd get back home after a quest and there was Findall coming out the door and I thought, Ooh, that's it for you, buddy. And I took him and <laughs> sacrificed him to Boethia. I'll teach you to sniff around my lady. <laughs> that's right. So um, Oh, I was there's another one um you know um you're getting uh Mjol. Um, yeah. uh, if you um induct her into the blades, uh Aaron goes with her. Oh, all God, the bitches. Crazy. And um was it I took them all out to go fight a dragon and he was there and <laughs> the dragon kept on going for him and all he had was like this iron dagger because he can't kill you and <laughs> can't give him anything. And he's just got this iron dagger. The, the dragon just ate him like in about five seconds. Good. Crazy. Yeah, Good he's, he's very annoying. Hey Colin, something I wanted to ask you about, this is off topic, sorry, but um uh, in the last episode, I thought I remembered we were talking about how you take off um, all of your gear, then you'll see that quest items don't actually weigh anything. Yeah. Um, you had mentioned that just in passing, there's like, oh, when I take off all my gear to go to bed, do you do you strip down every night when you go home? Do you put all your stuff on the, on the mannequin? And, well, well and, when I'm out adventuring, that lasts like days and days. When I go back to the house, and then I'm going to do like loads of more potions, and I'm going to do um, enchanting. Maybe going to make some new gear. Then I'll go back, and then I'll have a specific mannequin to put my gear that I'm always going to wear. And I'll put that on the mannequin, and then on the chest below it, I'll put all the rings and the potions. So mm-hmm. yeah, I take everything off, and then I'll go, and then I'll put on my my blacksmith um, overalls. <laughs> And then I'll put on my smithing and alchemy gloves, and I'll put on all that specific stuff. So everything that I have on me will come off, apart from the stuff that I'm going to use to do the smithing and the chanting. Because I could just, uh, I just had the the image of my head of like, you know, your guy coming home after a long day of adventuring and taking off his heavy armor, you know, maybe taking a quick bath. And then um, <laughs> putting on putting on a nightcap and a, and a gown. So that's, and that's why I just always, sleep for a while. No, that's why I always go for Lakeview Manor because I don't have a bath, so I just go out for a quick dip in the in the lake a quick and then dip run back. No, but then, I just remember you saying that. I thought that was interesting. I, th- I thought that maybe you actually did a whole routine of going, getting ready for bed, and, you know, brushing your teeth and. <laughs> That's great. And um, uh, Victor, you were saying that you have developed a taste for goat mm-hmm. because you wanted more light fixtures. Um, and I just I made a note of that because I remember in my previous playthrough having the hardest time finding goat horns. So I actually in my I looked at it the other day, 
and, and the chest out front in front of my uh, Lakeview Manor, I keep all my building materials and everything. Mm-hmm. And I have like 60 goat horns there because every time yeah. I go, every time I go to a merchant, and I see that he has goat horns. I buy them now because last playthrough, I remember it being impossible to find them. So I have, I probably have way too many at this point, but I'm like hoarding goat horns now. And every time I see a goat, <laughs> it's my first priority. Screw that bear. I'm going to go kill that goat first. <laughs> I need those, I need those damn horns. And then I'm so frustrated when you kill the goat and you get off your horse or whatever, and then you go up to it and, and there's no horns on it. I'm like, but I can see the horns. They're right there. I've, <laughs> I've got a big ax in my hands. I can remove them very easily. Just just let me have the horns, damn it. Luckily, one of one of the uh, – well, I think Skyree actually adds uh, a certain amount of, of – I guess you could call it loot or more realistic loot. Uh, but I also use something called uh, Harvest Overhaul, which gives you a – uh, I think a, a much more realistic amount of of stuff, and it always yields at least one horn out of a goat, um, if not two. Uh, yeah, it should should always be at least two because they're right there. One would think, anyway. Yeah, um, but you get a goat heart, and and Ooh, what do you do with you know, that? Uh, I forget. Goat heart actually has some interesting properties alchemically, but I can't remember what they are right now. Sorry. Uh, it's it it's good for some some. Potion. It's not frenzy. Um, it's something uh, damaging. Whatever it is, I can't remember. Not to you personally, but as a poison. Um, um, and you get there's bear. I can get bear hearts, dragon hearts, um, all wow. kinds of cool stuff. Yeah. And you said you never kill bunnies, but you could maybe never. get bunny hearts too. Uh, I don't know because I've never harvested one. Uh, that's also uh, a, a mod called Hunterborn, which allows uh, field dressing and harvesting of skinning of animals and, and so on. And so that'd forth. be that'd be great if um, you could harvest a bunny heart and use it in cooking or something, and it make your stamina <laughs> reproduce like ten times faster or something for well, a day. Or, you jump higher. Jump higher. Yeah, there you go. Or, I have to or, admit, or you can have your own children at a ridiculous rate. <laughs> I will I will harvest uh, uh, a bunny if I find a dead one because after all rabbit is very tasty so uh, I I will but I won't kill them uh, yeah so yeah, I was having a look through my stats I have slaughtered one bunny one bunny <laughs> yeah, must have been by accident I must have been taking out something and oh I think I ran one over with my horse yeah <laughs> will that kill it will your horse kill it if it steps on the on the rabbit. Again, I hate to keep bringing up mods, but uh, the um, convenient horses mod allows you to uh, use your horse as a battering ram in some cases, so you can accidentally run over things as well. But if you're sprinting with your horse, you can run things down with it. Um, Could you kill your own follower with that? I don't. I've never tried, Uh, but it's you you can't you don't generally kill things but you certainly stagger them if you if you hit them just right in in sprint mode nice. um, and i think i ran over a rabbit once doing that very nice uh, by mistake <laughs> well um as i was heading back towards uh, riverwood to talk with delphine i popped back into within the city limits and as soon as i did i was attacked by two dragon cultists mm-hmm. and, Colin had mentioned the cultists before. Where those? I assume those are randomly generated um, after you hit a certain level. I think I was around level twenty, maybe. That I'm not exactly right. sure. But uh, so I actually didn't hit the guys at all. The townsfolk came out and killed both of them, <laughs> and that was very nice. So I just actually went up and got the the really cool looking mask, and I have. Um, their robes and mask back at the house, and I actually put one on the mannequin just because I think it looks really cool. Yeah, they do, but they don't yield much much other good loot, though, do they? I mean, there's, there's no. they don't even carry any gold or good weapons. No, or like, like maybe a, a dagger of some sort, but I didn't yeah. even I don't even remember what they had. I, it wasn't worth writing down, so it couldn't have been that. I've also killed about a dozen of them so far. They're just all over the damn place. Really, I've only seen two. Huh. Yeah. Mm. I guess I'm just lucky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. So yeah, Delphine lets you in to the um the sleeping giant, and and then you go through a secret passage into the basement. After you ask her about the attic room, she says there is no attic room. Oh, you must be the person who's looking for something special. Why don't you follow me to the basement and we'll discuss more? And then she reveals to you 
um, that she, well, I don't know if she actually reveals to you that she's a blade. I think I wrote down here that she's a blade, but, um, then, um, she tells you that Farangar told you to get the, um, the dragon stone and the dragon stone is actually a map of the ancient dragon burial sites. So I need to, um, figure out where I need to go to kill some more dragons so I can get some shouts under my belt. But anyway, she eventually gives you the horn, and you bring the horn back to uh, Arngir. And then he teaches you the final shout of the Fusro Da, which is Da, of course. And no, actually, you learned that from Wolfgar. And um, Da, I think, means push, I believe. Yeah, that sounds right. And then um, there's some weird little ritual where (laughs) you get to taste the voice again, except for... Except for you uh, giving the voice, you get it given to you this time. You stand in the middle and the graybeards all shout at you, and then they say you have tasted the voice. Which I, th- it's such a strange phrasing to me. I like that for some reason. Yeah, it's pretty and then, cool. Then they tell you, um, you are the, I wrote down Izmir, maybe? Y S M I R, which I think translates to the Dragon of the North or something similar to that. I tried to write this down as the dialogue was happening. Um, but yeah, that basically wraps up the, um, that quest, the, uh, horn of you're going to win caller. Did anyone else have anything interesting on the return trip with the horn? Not really. I, except that I, it's fun to run out and use the full shout once you get it. Uh, yeah. You can kite people. It's great. Yeah. Yeah. But other than that, uh, I didn't. I haven't had. I, that's pretty much where I am right now. I, I I saved that until just yesterday to finish it off. So um, yeah, it's good to keep it a little fresh in the mind. I I finished yeah. it about a week ago, and I'm like, oh man, I got to write stuff down. I'm not going to remember anything. So I didn't uh, speak to Delphine. I I just walked in, and she walked in, and she went, oh, I believe you're the Dragonborn. I believe you wanted this. And I went, thanks, and I walked out. (laughs) (laughs) She she, she just wandered downstairs, and I was gone. Doesn't that doesn't that start the other quest as well? Uh, When you you haven't quite finished the Horn quest, but she starts the Kynesgrove quest at the same time, right? I, yeah, so that's the Blade in the Dark, so that's like the next one. So yeah. I've, uh, I've got, I just took the horn and went back, finished off the uh, the horn of Jordan Wincola, got the voice, and, and then meandered. I think I'd done finished off the Major's quest after that. Yeah. So you, you actually did go through and finish the whole um, the, the Major's college quest, Colin? Yeah, yeah, I finished that. But uh, as I said, I couldn't get to time to be able to sit down and sort of like mm-hmm. uh, write out and go through my saves and like uh, st- story it out. So, do you like uh, to wear the robes? Uh, no, no, I'm in I'm in the ebony armor. So yeah, you're full battle mage. Yeah, yeah, purple. Uh, I'll, uh, I don't like using fear though because you, you got to chase the bastards all over the place to try, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> try, <laughs> try to kill them. So. Yeah. Uh, it's, it should be easier now that I've gone down to um, uh, down the level, so they uh, they die a lot quicker. I, I mean, a lot quicker. I couldn't believe it when I first uh, went up against my first band of Marauder. How quickly you went down. Have you enchanted any of your new ebony armor at all? Well, yeah, I got um, fiery soul trap on my ebony sword. I have uh, Dawnbreaker. That's what I was dual wielding most recently. But uh, tonight, just before we started here, I finished off the uh, Mayroon's Razor. So I've mm. got that. So I'm going to have the... Nice. Uh, and when I'm doing bandits and creatures and things like that, then I'll have the Ebony Sword and Mayroon's Razor in the left. Yeah. And, uh, against Undead, I'll have Dawnbreaker and then mm-hmm. Mayroon's Razor in the left. That's to cool. That's, yeah, Dawnbreaker makes the undead explode or something, right? Yeah, it's a great sword. It's awesome. I think Maroon's Razor is is like the it's definitely the the ultimate second weapon for a dual wielder. It's really it's a really great uh, dagger. Yeah, I just I was I went up against the uh, I used it instantly the minute I got it when he uh, Dagon sends uh, his uh, his Daedra after you the minute yep. you get it I uh, I equipped it and I just dual wielded like a nutter at them both of them <laughs> and um didn't get either one of those uh i went up against the another dragon so there's a dragon just around the corner from my runes dagon shrine uh i done him uh, no no instant kill um 
and I think there was a couple of bandits are on my way back to Whiterun. And um, no, just for the whole time, I've, I think I've gone about, about 15 people, and it hasn't worked once yet. Hmm. So. I once shot at a dragon with that dagger once. It's oh. quite, it's quite <laughs> Yeah, I've, I've I've only ever done that once in one of my previous characters. Yeah, it is sweet because he had like three quarters of his health left. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, this has uh, been a very good uh, episode thus far, gentlemen. Do you have any other quirky stories or any funny things happen along the adventure? Well, oh, I've got um, I got any- um, Miko. Oh, huh? nice. Oh, Tell I've- what happened to Bran? Yeah. I, uh, uh, when I was, um, returning from one of my quests that I can't remember, um, I ran across, um, Shear Point. No, I got, I, I got a quest to go and kill the dragon at Shear Point. And, um, it turns out that that's where uh, Croesus is. Uh-huh. Um, so I, as I approached, I activated the dragon by getting close enough and pulled him down and, me, Bran, and Aethys managed to take him down and do exactly what um, Victor said earlier on was wait till he gets down and then run in with the dual wield attack and uh, attack him as hard as you can with the swords. And then when he flew up in the air, I would get the um, Jurek staff and I had, I think, a staff of chain lightning at the time, so I kept on hitting him with those while he was in the air. So finally got him down, and then we went up to go take care of Croesus, which was an absolute nightmare because he rolls down the mountain, he rolls up the mountain, he goes down. So we ended up fighting them all the way down to Korvanjund, which is like, uh, it's not that far away, but it's far enough away that you discover a whole new location chasing him across the whole of Skyrim. <laughs> and um, we got them, got him down to about three, uh, like, you know, almost just about an inch left of health. And um, I was only using standard attacks uh, nearly the whole time because I was out of stamina running after the bastard. Uh-huh. Uh, and I, I got him down and we're in just outside Corvindrin and we activated all the bandits that were in there and everything. So we're attacking him, attacking him. And then uh, I thought with a dual wield, so I took another stamina potion and dual wield him. And then halfway through the dual wield, uh, Bran jumped right in front of it, and I took him. Oh out. no! And there, was, and there was there was no way the amount of time it took me to take Croesus down. There was no way I was going to reload because I re I saved just before I activated the dragon. Mm-hmm. I couldn't go back that far after how long it took me to get him down without dying myself. So yeah, I just had to sacrifice the poor dog, uh, mm-hmm. and he was really really good. Yeah, but. Uh, are, is uh, the uh, armor dogs, do you think, more powerful than the normal dogs? Will they have more hit points? Uh, I Well, actually, I played with uh, Miko uh, tonight because I just picked him up uh, tonight. And uh, I was going through them. He's actually stronger than Bran. But I wow. think that's because I picked him up later because I'm okay. actually level 40 now. Uh-huh. And I think the dog is at level 40. Wow. Whereas I think when I picked up Bran... Bram was like, well, I was like level 20 or something, so he must have been like a lower level. Um, Miko yeah. is stronger. See that instantly because when I hit him, it, like Bran, if I'd ever hit him, his health would go down like about a good quarter. If I hit Miko, it doesn't go down that far. Wow. See, I've, I've had Miko with a previous character and he died pretty quickly and <coughs> I. I had then went to Markarth and bought Vigilance, and I thought Vigilance was a tank compared to Miko. So that's interesting, like, based on when you pick up the, the follower is actually how strong it'll be. And since all the dogs at Fort Dawnguard are individually named, it's not like you could just go back there and buy another one like I can with trolls. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There is uh, – the, the dogs – Respawn and uh, Donker. I know there's two initially, right? Uh, um, there's two that I know of. I, I don't know if they spawn or not. I know the trolls you have an unlimited amount of, but yeah. I, I doubt that there's another brand when he goes back to look again. No, probably not another brand, but mm. another dog of some kind. Yeah, I wonder if they would just produce another dog and give it a different name. That'd be. I, I that'd have be to admit, the dogs drive me crazy with the 
barking. It just drives me nuts. I, <laughs> Have you ever had a troll? Uh, <laughs> no, not yet. I will though, because he's my. Uh, but just the, it just I think that it's such a repetitive animation and sound bite that it just drives me crazy. And there's there isn't a single mod out there that changes it. So. I, I think that you're gonna kill your troll yourself then, probably. Oh really? Oh dear. yeah. <laughs> His, his noise is, it's a loop too, just like the dog, and it, it's so frequent. And you're like, shut <laughs> up! <laughs> well, how's well, your, uh, how's Rhea? How's your, uh, your follower, Andrew? She's a gem. I have no problems with her. She doesn't give me any attitude. Um, like Lydia, when you ask her to carry something, she's, just, you know, gives you a little bit of the, uh, what the fuck should I do for you now? You know, <laughs> no, 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 no. Rhea's like, what can I carry for you? And I'm just like, no, I want to take something that you have. Like, no, I, you don't need to carry anything. You're, you're just a nice, sweet girl. Now, I like Rhea, but it is confusing because at my house, I also have Raya. So I have Rhea and Raya. And Raya always walks in and says, hello, Thane. How are you today? And greetings. And, you know, they just have Rhea and Raya standing next to each other. It's, you know, it's like one of those annoying sets of parents who name their, their kids two similar names. And you're just like, oh, which is which? But, no, I, no, I like Rhea a lot. She, um, let's see, she has a, a little bow that she likes to bust out, but I've given her, I found an ebony bow and I found an ebony sword. So I've given, enchanted both of those with soul trap. And so she, and I just load her up with, uh, soul gems. That's basically the only thing I use my followers for. Oh, I guess if I get over encumbered, I'll, I'll dump my gear on them. But they're basically just soul collectors for me. I, I'll give them my enchanted... Um, Actually, can you check something as well for me, Andrew, when you get back? What's that? Um, I gave Aethys uh, an ebony bow. Uh-huh. And the bastard won't use it. <laughs> he keeps on pulling out his hunting bow. Really? Yeah, every time. I, I gave him one of those, uh, you know, when you're um, doing the Mages Guild uh, in, uh, where is it, uh, Labyrinthian, and you uh-huh. pick up those uh, drain spell bows. Yeah. I gave him one of those. He would use one of those. He would, use, he would use drain spell, but not the ebony. That's interesting. Wouldn't use the ebony bow. Wow. I don't know what it is. Hmm. It's annoying. Huh. That that is really interesting. I can look into that a little bit. But yeah, I've never had a problem with uh, Rhea using anything I've given her. She will always use the thing that I've given her over her, you know, crappy little bow that she's got right away. Um, we did go to oh man, what is that place called? It's right near Labyrinthian. There's another little um, its own section. It has its own location marker. But it's like some stairs that you can go down into this crypt, and there is yeah. a, a leveled Draugr. I don't know if he's an overlord, not yet in my playthrough, but he was a you know the, a very high-leveled Draugr. That's where I got my ebony bow from. Yeah, the, he was an ebony bow with the full force Draugr shout, uh, the first Rodai shout. Against yeah, me. we lost, um, I lost Wuthrod. And found it again, laying on the floor. It like said you have been disarmed or whatever, and took Wuthred away. But I was after I killed him, I was looking for. It. I was like, why isn't it on him? Why is it not on his body? But I found it like in the next room over, laying on the floor, which I thought was really strange. I like, used the, the disarm shout. Yeah, he used the disarm shout on me and my follower. It took, you know, I made the um, the fortified crossbow of soul trapping, or whatever for Rhea, and she was using that for a long time. But he also took that from her, too, and I never did find that one. Like, I looked all around. I couldn't find it laying anywhere. So that's why I, I decided to make his bow her new bow, and I gave it to her. I was like, here, we spent all this hard time and effort killing this guy. He actually killed both of us a few times, so well, I had to, you know, try that a couple times. He, he whooped my butt. But uh, she was glad to take that bow, and she's been using it really well since. So you mentioned that you have a fiery soul trap. Does that mean you've been to the Iron Bind Barrow? Yeah, yeah, the uh, Red Guard with a pet Argonian. I was talking about it earlier. Yeah, yeah, okay, that's right. Yeah. 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 That's where I got my ebony sword off of Gathric, that absolutely humongous droga. He's huge, isn't he? <laughs> he must be about nine foot tall. Yeah, I need to get there as soon as possible. I like the Iron Bind Barrow. Write that down. Go check that out. The Fiery Soul Trap is my favorite enchantment. 
Have you guys found any enchanted smithing things? No. I can't because it's that's been. Oh, like that's it. Sky re eliminates yeah. that. I yeah. I found one. And did I tell you that? The, oh, sorry, Victor. Uh, did I tell you that there is um, a uh, a smithing um, thing in Sky re? I found it. Really? Um, is it at the uh, top of the mountain? No, it's the Forge Master's fingers. The oh, uh, yes. oh, that, that's a, that's a, an orc quest. Yes, uh, if you go and get the Forge Master fingers, they have fortify smithing on them. But because they're a quest item, you can't disenchant them. But no. you can use them for a little bit, and it's but it, and it's only like ten percent. But yeah. uh, that's all I could find. Yeah, I've but, never. Uh, I've always just given them back. Uh, yeah, same here. Would Skyrim <laughs> eliminate the uh, pickaxe on top of? High Rothgar, or the Throat of the World. Do you guys know it, about it, that, uh, that pickaxe up there? Yeah, it changed it. it changed it. Oh to man, that sucks. <laughs> what What does it do? I'm not even sure. I know what the pickaxe. I, is I think it was like shock damage or something like that. Oh, oh okay. Oh, it's, oh, it's um, the notch. The notch pickaxe. The <laughs> notch yeah, pickaxe yeah. has yeah. has some enchantment on it, but it's also a smithing enchantment yeah, as well. Yeah. So if you disenchant it, you get a smithing enchantment. So. Uh, and I always liked doing that too. It's like finding a smithing enchantment as soon as you can. I'd say I've been, I've been just, just a very quick aside. I've I've been playing another character with a another overhaul mod called uh, Requiem, and Requiem is hardcore. I'll tell you what, um, it it completely delevels the world. So so nothing is leveled with your character. It's all the same level. So you when you start out, you are Completely, <laughs> completely you, you are dead <laughs> from, from the very beginning. It's it's really it's really tough. Uh, and thing animals and things can you know rip break. If you have a wooden bow, it'll just break the bow <laughs> right out of your wow. hands. It's, yeah, it's pretty it's pretty hardcore. Uh, anyway, sorry that was just a uh, but requiem is tough. That's awesome. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad that we have, uh, again, I know I said it last episode, but I'm glad we have a mod player deep into modding who's uh, able to share the, the different stories with that. Modding's really cool. Yeah, um, speaking of which, um, I might be letting another cat out of a different bag, but I hear there might be some um, footprints in the background of maybe a new yet another... <laughs> Um, Skyrim podcast coming up for Metal Shark Studio nice. and we might be able to get into a little bit of modding with that one. I'm not going to say too much more on it, but uh, there might be another new show in the works. Cool. And um, wow, we've been going a little bit here so far and since it's just the three of us tonight, I don't think the Divines vs. Daedra game should be played and we've been going pretty long anyway, so we'll we'll hold that off for another week when we have more participants to go through. Um, any other things you guys would like to uh, talk about before we sign off for the evening? I'm good. Yeah, so am I. Okay, uh, great. Thanks for, thanks for letting me ramble and ramble on. Oh, no, not at all. To, yeah. yeah, it's it's a great listen. I, I'll be definitely listening back to it, too, I guarantee. Um, but just as our little outro here, if each of you could please just state your name and your character's name again, remind us what your character's called, and then go ahead and do your little plugs that, remember, we did last week. You can plug a Twitter account if you have one or anything that you would like to promote, um, like bacon or anything like that. <laughs> Colin, you'd like to go ahead with that? Uh, yeah, hi, my name's uh, Colin. Uh, my character's name is Gonvar Oakenmaster, uh, and I, I really don't have anything to plug. Maybe cheese. Cheese is good. You should you should plug um, Batman the Animated Series. Uh, no, it's, it's got its own plugs. Okay. Sounds it doesn't good. need plugs. It's too All awesome. Right. It's too <laughs> awesome. All right, Victor. Uh, Victor, uh, my character's name is Slythe Aaron, and uh, I think maybe in the in the uh, uh, same vein as Bacon, I'd like to plug the five major food groups, which are beer, bread, apples, cheese, and honey. Man, uh, I've been rocking some apples and cheese with my lunch recently. I did not. I just. I don't know if I'd forgotten about it, but apples and cheese are a mega combination. They're absolutely. so good together. <laughs> That's great. Excuse me. No, and I don't have any any plugs uh, aside from that. I have my little Tumblr uh, blog for Slythe, but I haven't really added to it, so I won't plug that again this time. 
No, it's fine. I've been, I don't have a Tumblr, but um, I've been wanting to actually look into that. If you don't have Tumblr, can you access other people's and look at their stuff? Is that yeah, possible? sure. You can, you can search it up and follow any, any Tumble, any Tumble log you want to. You don't have to have a Tumbling, Tumblr account, I don't think. Cool. I've never actually looked into it, so uh, I might try to figure that out and look up your character Slythe and see what's going on there. It's free. Woohoo! <laughs> so for everyone out there, I would like for all who are participating in the Skyrim Roundtable, if you could please upload a picture of your character, even if you're doing just a play along and not necessarily on the podcast, please upload a picture of your character um, to Facebook with the hashtag Skyrim Roundtable. And also, there is a new Twitter account for a Skyrim addict that Michael started. So if you have Twitter, please upload your pictures there, too, and hashtag Skyrim Roundtable, and do that at a Skyrim addict. And please join the A Skyrim Addict Facebook group, because we have lots of nice activity going on over there, lots of really good discussions and stories. And if you could, please send in a feedback email, or preferably an audio feedback file, to skyrimroundtable at gmail.com and tell us about your playthrough. And anyone who's doing a play-along, please, you are encouraged to also send in your audio feedback. And please go to the A Skyrim Addict podcast and give it five stars for a review on iTunes. Go to the iTunes review section for that. And I would just like to make an announcement here that the next show will actually be a week earlier than on the schedule. The next show will be Saturday, June 28th at 7 p.m. U.S. American Eastern Time. And the three quests for next show will be A Blade in the Dark, Diplomatic Immunity, Diplomatic Immunity, and (laughs) A Cornered Rat. So that will be quests 7, 8, and 9. And the schedule change is to avoid the 4th of July weekend because I'm sure that some people around the U.S. will be celebrating some sort of holiday that weekend. Uh, boo. But, boo. <laughs> then um, the next show will resume the regular schedule. will be Saturday, July 26th after that, and those quests will be Alduin's Wall, The Throat of the World, Elder Knowledge, and Discerning the Transmundane. So go ahead and start your next three quests, everyone who's doing a play-along. And uh, we'll, we look forward to hearing about your uh, adventures. And please stay tuned after this broadcast to see if people have sent in their own audio feedback about their adventures. And if everyone would please join me in wishing everyone... Happy Skyrimmy! We gotta work on that. I'm a celebrity, honestly. You're a wannabe. I'm a prodigy. The suggestion you're better than me at being a warrior? Ha! Comedy. It's a gift to me. I don't just spit flames lyrically, but literally. And the Elder Scrolls are scripts in which I've written your obituary. I am the Dragonborn, wearing a hat with badass horns. I'm Dover Keen, I'm globally, you're nobody at all. Hi there, fellow Skyrim addicts. This is Kathleen, and here is my audio playthrough through the round table. My character is a male altmer named Voris Faon. His skill set is as follows. Warrior skill is smithing. Mage skill is illusion. And thief skill is light armor. My stat spread is magicka is 2, health is 3, and stamina is 1. My spouse was Gregor, and my home was Hellerton Hall, but due to a glitch, that is not going to be possible. So my new spouse is Gazora Gra Bagel, the blacksmith in Markarth, and my new house is Honeyside in Riften. My followers are a human follower named Goldier and a death hound named Garmer. My faction is the Dark Brotherhood, and my mode of travel is a horse. So, Voris went through the Unbound quest and followed Roloff, because why would he follow Hadvar after the Imperials tried to cut off his head? Then comes the Before the Storm quest. He talked to Gerder, and then he went to go visit the Valeria siblings at the Riverwood Trader. He got the quest for the Golden Claw. Vora stormed through the Bleak Falls Barrow and came out richer and with the Dragonstone. 
He then went on to finish the Before the Storm quest. Outside the gates of Whiterun, Voris met a Khajiit named Kajaro. The Khajiit had lost his moon amulet and asked Voris to return it to him if he found it among his adventuring spoils. Voris went on to his next quest, which was Dragon Rising, in which he saw and defeated his first dragon. On his way to Iberstead to see the Greybeards, Boris met Telrav, who asked him to escort him to his camp near Nilhelm. It turns out that Telrav was a bandit and tried to lead Boris into a trap. It didn't work. Boris spoke to the Greybeards during the Way of the Voice quest, and they gave him his next quest, which was the Horn of Jurgen Windcaller. Along the way, he found the moon amulet for the Kajaro, and he also found some shards for the Mayrun's Dagon dagger. He returned the moon amulet and was given 500 in gold and following services. Boris also ran into Omran in Whiterun, who was looking for his family sword. Boris found it at White River Watch. In return for the sword, Omran showed Boris some warrior skills. He made his way to Windhelm to speak to Adventus to kick off the Dark Brotherhood quest. Boris finally bought a horse and went to Falkreath. He ended up doing the Daedric quest, Ill Met by Moonlight, and got some pretty sweet light armor called the Savior's Hide. Boris was and still is using the abandoned cabin from the Dark Brotherhood quest with friends like these as home base for now. He has finally made it to Ustengrav, and, like a boss, Vors powered through on, powered through it. He found the horn he also found that the horn was taken. He found a note that has led him to Delphine in Riverwood, and that is where his adventure has ended for now. Here is something weird though. Vors 